summit even began. And, um, and uh, let's see, okay. And, um, and then I'm gonna bring our hostess on, Miss Selena Barnes, okay? So Sister Buckner, can you open us out with prayer, please? Yes, ma'am. Eternal right. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, no other name we know of that men or women or humanity can be saved, delivered, and set free. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your provision, protection, and faithfulness in our lives. We thank you for inviting us into your presence this morning and daily, enabling us to live in a relationship with you. We give thanks to you, O oh Lord, for the good and for your loving kindness is everlasting. We shall give thanks to you for you have answered our prayers and you have become our salvation. We confess our need for you today. We need your healing, your grace. We need your hope restored. We need to be reminded that you work on behalf of those you love constantly, powerfully, and completely. You forgive us for trying to fix our situations all on our own. Forgive us for forgetting how much we need you above everything and everyone else. We come to you and we bring you the places that we are hurting. You see where no one else can see or understand. You know the pain we have carried, the burdens, the cares. You know where we need to be and to be set free. Thank you that you can do far more than we could ever imagine. Thank you that you will never waste our pain and suffering. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. We love you and we need you today because Lord, we know as women of God that you cover us. We ask you to heal all the broken hearts which have lost loved ones during this pandemic. Give us strength to forge on in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify your holy name for you are so worthy to yes. be praised. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, welcome everyone, everyone. Let me just take a scan of everybody's beautiful faces. Oh my God, this is like a vision, a dream come true uh, to see all of you ladies here. Oh my gosh, I tell you, I am just elated that you have, that you're here with to us. start out and with just giving a quick little story of how this uh, refresh uh, and renew uh, summit came about. Um, we, ha we have a group called 50 Fit and Fabulous here on uh, Facebook. And uh, we had our first tea. Um, and, you know, that was right when the pandemic hit. And I was still in California at the time. And I wanted to get together with the ladies physically, right? We just, cause we just knew that it was gonna blow over. And um, we, Kat, this is when Kathy and I were working together. Kathy Thomas there, we were working together on this project and um, no tea houses was open to, you know, to have tea inside of the establishment at the time. And, um, and so we said, well, we'll just have it outdoors, right? And, but it was a little chilly there, even in San Diego, it was a little chilly at the time. And so we said, well, you know what? Why don't we have it online? Why don't we do the tea online? That way we can have more ladies uh, to participate because you know everyone is from all different places. And, um, and so we decided to have our tea online. And I tell you, it was so, it was like, I think it was eight of us, Valerie, me, my mother, uh, I think, yeah, of course, Kathy and a couple of other ladies that was on there, we had a ball. And so then we said, you know what, we need to do this again, right? So we had our second annual tea. And, um, and so from that, which was in September, this past September, 
And from that, we decided, you know, this thing, this is, it's so much, so much need out there between us women, especially women 50 and over, right? And, uh, but then we have daughters and we have nieces. And so we had a few young ladies uh, that also cho joined us. And so we said, you know, from that tea, we were going to, I said, I just want to do something where, where I have multiple speakers, you know, I didn't know what the word was, summit at the time. And so I was talking to Valerie, Valerie Taylor Best, right? And so uh, we were talking and chatting and we got excited. And, um, and then I was talking to my former boss uh, from the Yellow Pages. And she was like, oh yeah, we need it because she was going through a lot. And she said, yeah, why don't you just do a refresh and renew in 2022? And I said, oh my gosh, thank you. So she's the one that coined the, the, the title refresh and renew in 2022. And then we said summit, right? And so here we are today. I have able, anointed, wonderful ladies that are going to be before you today. We have uh, is six of us all together and two prayer warriors. The one sister, uh, Lorena Buckner, just opened us up. And then the, the one that's going to close it all in and close it up for us is my mother, Barbara Ray, and she's our prayer warrior. So we have a team right now of eight ladies that have worked hard to put this uh, summit together so that we can, you know, touch where, where we need to touch so we can be blessed, you can be blessed. And so I you know, I'm just grateful to just see all of your beautiful faces. I don't know. Um, I don't know who, um, I don't know who is, how many we have right now, but, um, you know, we have a lot of, like, my screen is full and I have a big screen, <laughs> right? So I want to, without further ado, I want to bring our wonderful hostess. Oh, and that, let me just tell you a little bit about this hostess, right? So as we were going, you know, starting, you know, things up, uh, getting things together, it was someone else we had, you know, on our team at first, and they couldn't, com you know, complete the task, right? They had other things going on. And so the Lord dropped Selena Bournes in my spirit. And I'm telling you, when I called, she did not hesitate to answer. And so I, with her personality, she's already in this space. And I am just so honored to have Selena Bournes on here with us. And so Selena is now going to take over and she's going to give us direction on what to do next. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. Selena! Thank you. Thank you so much. And I am truly honored that you asked me. And of course, like you said, no hesitation. I mean, it was a no brainer. And you said you didn't know how many people were on right now. We have 26 participants, including. Wow. The speaker. So, yeah. yeah. We definitely have um, a good good participation. I want to welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the Refresh and Renew in 2022 Summit. Guys, we have been working so hard to ensure that you leave us today with fresh motivation and empowerment to take your life to the next level. This summit is all about self-love, and self-empowerment for achieving women in their midlife and the young ladies that they mentor. This summit is designed to take you to a higher level in your life. Now, make sure you have your speaker cheat sheets handy because when that inspiration hits you to write some stuff down that these, these speakers are talking about, these nuggets that they'll be giving away, you wanna make sure that you have your speaker sheet. The speaker sheet has each speaker's photo and space for you to take your notes. So make sure you grab those so you can make sure that you can keep up with who said what. Now, you are in for an amazing treat from our speakers. Throughout this summit, I will be announcing what each speaker is giving to you as a gift and what their special offers are. So be sure to listen for it. And at the end of the summit, we will be hosting a VIP after party where our VIPs can ask questions to our panel and even have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the speaker of their choice. And there will be a VIP drawing from, for some amazing products from our speakers. I told you, 
definitely next level. So there's still time for you to join this VIP after party. We don't want you having FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. The link is the link to upgrade to the VIP is in the chat box. So make sure you go there and do your upgrade. And at the end of the summit, I will have each speaker's contact information so that they can follow up with you. I mean, you can follow up with them directly if you would like to. Now, it is time to fully introduce to you the woman who had the vision to put this summit together, Ms. Renee Michelle Floyd. Renee is the creator and administrator of the F350 and Fit and Fabulous group on Facebook. Now, her vision for creating F3, is what we call it, was to make friends with other seasoned women who share the same goals of getting fit in all areas of their lives, especially as they enter their golden years. Renee is also the founder of Embracing Your Beauty, who has sponsored this lovely summit. And she is the CEO of Beautiful Hair Products, who helps women take back their self-esteem through building a healthy relationship with their natural God-given hair. Now, creating this summit, like she said, it was dropped in her spirit one day, and it became evident that this body of work had a deeper purpose. She has given God full control and wants to fulfill his dreams for this and other summits in the future. So without further ado, I give back to you, Ms. Renee Michelle Floyd, who will be teaching you how to embrace your beauty. Take it away, Renee. Wow. All right. Thank you, Selena. Thank you so much. Yeah, my, my, um, I tell you, God is good. Um, my talk is about embracing your beauty from the inside out, right? And um, it was a time when I was um, young, just like everybody else. I was married um, and I had a family and, um, and I was just going through the motions, right? Just going through the motions. And um, I found myself depressed, um, downhearted, spiritless, uh, and kind of out of sorts, really, kind of out of sorts. And um, my self-confidence was low. I was having problems in my marriage. Um, I felt like, you know, uh, I had weights just on me. I was contemplating, you know, um, should I stay in this marriage? You know, um, how many of you have had have had those crossroads where you thought about things like that, where you just don't know which way to go. And I had four children at the time, <laughs> four children at the time, everybody was home. And I tell you, I, um, you know, I, I just felt like, you know, I needed to start over. Um, I felt like I didn't matter. I felt like, um, I was lost, really. And, and but, you know, the, the ironic thing was, is that most of my marriage was in ministry. You know, uh, we were a minister. I was a first lady at the time. And um, our children, we had a magnifying glass on us. And so you couldn't appear like you had anything wrong, right? And so there was a, a, a darkness and an insecurity in my life at that time. And um, I just, I needed to, um, I needed to uh, just feel like uh, I matter, like, like my life was worth something. And so God literally, he literally uh, planted the seed of embracing your beauty from the inside out. And so I wrote those words with him in my head in one afternoon. And then he showed me where to go to record the actual affirmation. I, I, I recorded six affirmations uh, in the studio, but the, the work came afterwards when I was supposed to put these affirmations, um, you know, in uh, action. You know, he showed me exactly how to put, put everything together. And, um, and so once I did that, the light came on and I felt like I can make it then, you know? And so needless to say, 
you know, we, my husband and I at the time, uh, we went through a painful divorce. Uh, I've got young, I got married when I was really young and, um, we went through a very painful divorce, but God got all the glory because once I, once I produced and released that project, God just blessed. I mean, I've, I had women to call me and cry and say, oh, my life has changed. You know, I, I, you know, you know, sometimes we think that we're the only ones that's going through something until we, until we talk, until we figure out, you know, that we're not the only ones, right? And, um, and so anyway, this program really was written for me. And then God allowed me to share it to the world. And so it is called Embracing Your Beauty from the Inside Out. And uh, what it is, is a program that um, helps you to recalibrate your thinking about yourself. And it has action steps and, and, um, and, and activities that you do to focus your attention on yourself. And so I wanted to ask you ladies, do, do you feel sometimes that you forget about yourself? Like you forget to uh, celebrate yourself. You know, so we prop everybody else up and, um, and we uh, celebrate everybody else, but sometimes we forget about ourselves. And so I wanted to encourage you to start affirming yourself. Uh, uh, affirmations are positive statements. The difference between positive, just thinking positive and then affirming yourself is that, you know, you, you're, you're trying to make a feeling happen when you're just trying to think about something positive. But when you affirm yourself, God has you to look back on your life and wonder how you got over, right? and celebrate the, the achievements that you have already accomplished. And, um, and so, you know, we as human beings, we all need uh, affirming. And, um, and so, you know, uh, t 10 years later, after uh, my divorce, I met and married the love of my life, Richard. And, <laughs> and we have a son now, uh, uh, he's 15 years old. And uh, my life has never been better. So God, I tell you that to let you know that God will bring us up out of the muck and the mire. You know, uh, when we don't think that um, our lives will, will go to the next level. When we're open, God will definitely uh, is there to help us to, to build us back up. And so I wanted to, just introduce a uh, beautiful, um, <laughs> uh, uh, embracing your beauty from the inside out. I'm so used to saying beautiful hair products, right? <laughs> We're not talking about that today. So embracing your beauty from the inside out is a collection of self-love uh, and self-empowerment affirmation and action steps that you can take to get your life back. Meaning, you know, start feeding your your soul with positive and affirming um, thoughts. And you, it's not just to do that. These, this program has, um, it has uh, uh, action steps that you can take to, to bring you to that part. It has a six, uh, six CD uh, songs on there that uh, behind music that helps to usher you into changing your way of thinking and to making you feel uh, a better, like a better person, right? And so as you listen to the, uh, the self-affirming uh, words and the spoken uh, words that, that are written, uh, God is going to minister to you. And so I, I want to encourage you to, to start taking that time to, to turn back into, to tune into your, uh, your spirit. Uh, I had lost, you know, who I was. I had even lost what my favorite color was, as little as that may seem. So I just wanted to to uh, share that with you, ladies. Um, let me see. Uh, how do I show? Let me show you guys my uh, screen so that you can see. Uh, let's see how. Oh yeah, I had to share so that you can see my uh, offer here. Hold on one second. 
All right. So this is my uh, offer here. What you get, can everyone see that? Can everyone see that? So what you get is um, my 52 weeks of embracing and loving yourself, affirmations and action steps, right? So you get a, a email every week for a whole year. You also get your Embracing Me journal that you actually record your experience in and you get the MP3, the digital download of the affirmation CD. A total value of $231 today is $57. And if you're interested, you go right to embracingyourbeauty.net slash E-Y-B-R-R-22. And that is my offer for you ladies today. And I will have the uh, link in the, um, in, the, in the chat area so that you can take advantage of that. Okay, um, I hope that I touched a little bit of what you needed to hear today. Uh, and uh, if you need more information, just please let me know and I will definitely get, get to you. Okay, all right, that's my talk. <laughs> all right, wow, what an amazing way to kick off this summit, right, ladies? Now, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I saw in the chat, you know, that we need to make sure you go to the top of the upper right corner, I believe it is on your screen, and switch your view to speaker view. That way, when whoever's speaking, you'll be able to just see them on the screen, okay? All right, and then also, don't forget your speaker speaker cheat sheet, because let me tell you, I was writing notes. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I was writing <laughs> notes, and one of the things I took away was from Renee's speech was the importance of being strong in faith and being open to listening for God's voice and taking action and seeing how your obedience positively affects others, right? The speaker cheat sheets should have been emailed to you. Yes. Um, and you, you, yeah, you should have gotten those in the email. I saw that chat. All right. Now, each speaker came ready today with specialized gifts and offers. And Renee talked about one of hers, but I am going to give you a little bit more information. Each speaker has one free gift for everyone, a special offer for everyone, which is what Renee shared, and a free gift just for our VIPs. Now, guys, there is still time to upgrade to VIP status so that you can attend the after party. The link is in the chat. Now, VIPs will have the opportunity to ask questions to our panel and even have one-on-one -on -one conversation with the speaker of their choice. And over there is where we will be pulling the winner for the VIP free giveaway that contains some awesome products from all of our speakers. Now, Renee's gift to everyone is a list of all 52 of her affirmations from her program, right? And her today only, today only special is that you can get the entire 52 weeks of embracing and loving yourself affirmation series, plus the downloadable embracing and in loving yourself journal, plus six affirmations set to music and spoken word to nurture your mind and move your soul as a digital download. And like she said, all of that is just for $57. And that's amazing because the value is $231. Now our VIPs will get a chance to win the entire system, the whole year of self-love and affirmations for embracing and loving yourself series, plus the embracing and loving yourself journal, plus the six affirmations set to music and spoken words for what? Guess what? Absolutely free. The VIP's name will go into a drawing. And when we get over there to the VIP after party, we will spin the wheel and pick a winner that will have Renee's product in it. Now you can claim your gift and find out more about Renee, what Renee has to offer if you go to bit.ly forward slash Renee Michelle Floyd, R-E-N-E-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-F-L-O-Y-D, all in lowercase. All of these links that you guys are gonna be hearing is going to be provided again at the end of the summit. So if you don't have a chance to write it down right now, don't worry about it. I'm going to put a big slide up that will have all that information for you. Now, coming to the stage next is our health guru, Priya Revis Das. 
Priya is our favorite Movement Mondays coach in the 50 Fit and Fabulous Facebook group. She has a master's in clinical exercise physiology. She is a certified clinical exercise physiologist and a certified personal trainer. Priya says that she has had more than her share of health issues. So guess what? Now she likes to educate and help others to get and stay healthy. Priya is passionate about helping women in their middle and older years lose stubborn fat, I'm right there, reduce chronic pain and reclaim control of their health. Priya will be telling you how to reclaim your health. Take it away, Priya. So ladies, are you, okay. I need to change this to speaker view. It is on speaker view, okay. I'm gonna put my timer on. <laughs> so ladies, are you ready to reclaim your health and transform your lives? Raise your hands if you are. So, you know, even though I'm not in your shoes, I hear you and I see you because I know what it's like to feel frustrated, to deal with struggles, and to not be where we want to be and not feel the freedom that we can feel, you know? So most of us women have spent much of our adult lives taking care of our families, taking care of our children, and, uh, you know, putting ourselves last. But it's time now to take charge of your, your health and to take yourself off of the back burner. Okay. So, so we are all in different seasons of life, but the basic principles of health are still the same. And that's what I want to encourage you with. So, you know, when we have our health goals and some of you raise your hands, we have health goals or whatever kind of goals, we need to have uh, put those as a priority. We need to change our mindset you know, and have that as, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to accomplish. And then we come up with a plan, the what, when, how. And when we take those steps, the action steps, that's when we can get to our goals. So what I'm gonna be talking about is physical health. And we're gonna have a lot of talk from some amazing speakers about different uh, health, uh, you know, mental, emotional, uh, business coaching, you know, all of that. I'm going to be talking about physical health. And I'm going to cover three things, uh, nutrition, healthy habits, and physical fitness. So with nutrition, you know, it's really important what we take in, what we eat, you know. So nutri for, for good nutrition, healthy nutrition, planning is at the heart of it, you know. So, you know, you think of your healthy plate, you know, you have your healthy plate, which is uh, half of it is vegetables and fruit, more vegetables, less fruit, quarter of it is a lean protein, quarter of it is healthy complex carbs like whole grains, you know, so having that as our plan, as our goal, uh, where we're eating helps us to uh, achieve our nutrition goals. And, you know, people often think, oh, eating healthy is so expensive. No, it's not. You know, eating at, uh, doing fast food all the time or eating processed food all the time, that's what's expensive. Eating healthy is not, you know, you just need to, you don't have to eat organic food. You know, you stock up on healthy non-perishables, you cook from scratch, you buy fresh and frozen you know, you use the store coupons. There are many ways, and I help my clients do all of that, you know. Uh, it's possible, uh, don't think that if your budget is limited, you can't eat healthy. So when I talk, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is healthy habits. And there are many healthy habits, but I'm gonna cover three really important ones. The first one is hydration making sure you're drinking enough water, getting enough fluid into your body, you know? So the recommendation is half of your body weight in ounces. 
So for example, you weigh 100 pounds, you drink 50 ounces of water, you know, that's the minimum. And by consuming uh, more water, you'll have more energy, you'll feel less hungry, you'll have less cravings. Drinking water is so important. It's important for our brains to function well, it's important for our body to function well. The other thing which is really important, and as we are getting older, becomes more of a challenge for us, and I know I struggled with it myself, is getting good quality sleep for the right amount of time. We need seven to nine hours of quality sleep. And uh, that's something which we should put as a priority. If we struggle with it, uh, we need to see what can we do to improve that sleep. And finally, uh, for healthy habits, being active throughout your day. You know, uh, you may have heard the saying, uh, sitting is the new smoking. Smoking is bad for our bodies, really unhealthy, and sitting is as well. You know, sitting, prolonged sitting can lead to fat deposition around the heart, increases our triglycerides, it decreases our good cholesterol, you know. But by being active, we are actually throughout the day. It's not just, okay, I'm exercising for half an hour or one hour a day, and then I'm going to be sitting for eight hours. That's not good for us. We need to be active throughout, getting up every 30 to 60 minutes, maybe going uh, to the bathroom or going and getting a drink of water or doing a few stretches or doing a two minute workout, even go running up and down the stairs, walking up and down the stairs, you know, these little, little things uh, bringing about uh, in our lives will help us, you know, increases our need, what's called the non-exercise activity thermogenesis, you know, it's really good for us, it's important for our health. So in the healthy habits, three things, hydration, sleep, and being active throughout the day. And then finally, we're going to talk about exercise, you know, so if you're getting just, you're just getting started, I'll say is safety is very important, you know, make sure you have a doctor's approval, especially if you have health concerns, which have to be considered, you know, make sure you have a warm up, you have a cool down, and you are watching the ambient uh, temperature, you know, where you're exercising, is it too warm, is it too humid, is it too cold, make sure that it's a safe environment. And uh, just a reminder, you know, exercise has been called the natural anti-aging method tool that we have you know we have it it's not a drug it's not uh something we have to buy you know it's something which is available for us and it's it's the way we can uh slow down the aging process help ourselves to age well help ourselves to better manage our uh, chronic conditions, you know. So I highly recommend it. So, you know, when we talk about physical exercise, we talk about several kinds of exercise, and one of them is aerobic exercise. And aerobic exercise is what many people, most of you are probably doing. And that's, you know, walking, running, jogging, bicycling, swimming, you know, all of those are aerobic exercise where you're getting your heart rate up, you know. The recommendation is that you're doing that for at least 30 minutes, uh, five days a week or more. And if you're not doing it, start small, start with 10 minutes a day, you know, and build it up. If you don't have 30 minutes at a stretch, you can do 10 minutes uh, and then do 10 minutes another time and then do 10 minutes another time. And it's the total of 30 minutes or more. You know, it, it'll help you with weight man loss, weight management, you know, helping you stay independent as you age, improving your mood, improving your cholesterol levels, making your heart stronger, many, many benefits. And as we are getting older, uh, we need to uh, be doing balance and flexibility training as well, you know, stretching and doing balance exercises because we are losing those uh, abilities as we get older. So it's recommended that we do it at least two to three times a week, but we can do it more often. We can even do it every day. You know, doing some of those exercises will help us to um, maintain our flexibility, maintain our ability to do more stuff and pr protect ourselves. 
And finally, with exercise, I'm gonna talk about my favorite thing and that's resistance exercise. And that's the, the reason it's so important to me is because I see the benefit of it. All research is showing that uh, resistance exercise is as important or maybe even more important than aerobic exercise. You know, it's important for reducing abdominal fat. It's important for, uh, you know, giving you a longer lifespan, boosting your brain health, you know, for osteoporosis prevention and management, you know, for your a better body image, you know, lowering your risk of injury or falls, you know, reducing your cancer risk for your heart. It's uh, for your for your blood sugar levels, there's so many benefits of uh, resistance exercise. The recommendation is that you do uh, engage your all your muscle groups at least two to three times a week. And another recommendation is, um, or it's a principle of uh, resistance training, and that's the principle of progressive overload. So that is increasing the stress you place on your musculoskeletal system. You keep increasing it. So if today I start off with a five pound weight, um, after a few weeks, I'm, I would need to progress to maybe an eight pound weight and then progress to a 10 pound weight. You know, But if I stay at five pounds, I'm not going to gain any more benefits. I'm just going to stay right down there. I'm not going to become better. So if we want to uh, uh, improve and increase, we need to have more of that. And, you know, I, I'll just share briefly my story, you know, and uh, Selena referred to it, you know, I, I've just been through all of this myself. I got into resistance training only in the last like 10 years of my life, you know, I didn't, I'm 57 years old. I didn't grow up doing anything more than walking. I was not into exercising at all. I walked and I love walking. And it was only when I was in grad school that I learned the importance of doing all of this stuff. But it wasn't until, and I, you know, started engaging in resistance exercise in the last decade or so. But, you know, it wasn't really consistent. It was haphazard. There was no program, no plan. And that led to no results. And it was only when I was actually preparing to become a personal trainer and studying for it that I learned about how to set together a program. And I put together a program for myself. And it was when I actually followed the program, made sure I exercise for at least two to four days a week. And I had a progressive program that I started seeing benefits. I have the kind of body which is not prone to having much muscle. I've never really had much muscle. And I can say that at the age of 57, I have more muscle than I've ever had in my life, you know, and it's possible. So what I want to encourage you all with is you can do it. You know, you can reclaim your health. You can do it. There's nutrition. There's uh, healthy activities, healthy habits, and uh, exercise. You can adopt all of those things, which will help you to um, reclaim your health. Uh, you know, I remember um, one of the um, uh, questions, you know, I posted in uh, the group was about uh, lower levels of estrogen in menopause lead to heart disease, osteoporosis and abdominal weight gain. And someone asked, how do we counteract that? Counteract that? Well, how do we do that? By focusing on these areas, healthy diet, regular exercise, maintaining a healthy body weight, managing blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol, these reduce our risk for uh, heart disease and stroke. So my question to you all is, are you ready for a change in 2022? You know, raise your hand. You know, so where are you now? And where do you want to be with your health goals? How do you get from where you're now to where you want to be? You know, do you have a plan? Do you have the knowledge and the ability to get there? And many of you do. 
You know, many of you know what you should eat, you know what habits you should have, and many of you are following through with them and you know what exercise you should do. And maybe you know, or, uh, but you haven't been doing it and you just need to go back. Some of you don't, and that's fine because we can't all be experts doing knowing everything. We don't. Do you need help? I can help you. There are others who can help you as well. I just wanted to say, you can do it, you know? Make sure you download my PDF. It's free for everyone who attends. It's five powerful actions women can uh, take uh, to uh, reclaim their health. Make sure you download that. And uh, right now I have some other specials going and uh, Selena will be referring to them as well. But what I just really want to encourage you with is that it's in your power. You, you can do it, you know, it's time to reclaim your health. It's time to uh, take charge of your health, to take yourself off the back burner. This is the way you can love yourself and love those around you by taking care of yourself and being stronger and more able to take care of others. Thank you so much for listening to me and I hope you were blessed. All right, thank you so much, Priya. Thank you, let me tell you, like I said, guys, I'm taking my notes. And one of the things, two things actually, I got out of Priya's uh, presentation. She said, pretty much like, just like you plan your life, planning is the heart of nutrition. We have to make sure that we plan to eat healthy. And then my aha moment was the, when she talked about being active throughout the day, right? Because, you know, how many, how many of us, I mean, you can be guilty. I've been guilty of this. Or you may know someone who may go work out for 30, 45 minutes to an hour, and then they sit around for the rest of the day. Or they go work out and then they go have pizza and eat ice cream and then sit around the rest of the day and then say, oh, I'm good, I work out, you know? So no, like she said, you have to take active moments every, all throughout the day, whether it's going up and down the stairs, take a little walk. And so that was the aha moment for me. So guys, listen, like I said, each speaker came ready with their specialized gifts. And there's still time to upgrade to VIP status because the VIPers are going to get their names put in a drawing to have something from every single speaker, uh, a nice big bundle of, of packages that we have to offer. So what we are offering today is one free gift for everyone, a special offer for everyone, and a free gift just for our VIPs. So if you are interested in coming to hang out with us in the VIP after party, the link is in the chat. Um, I'm going to say this after every speaker, the VIPs will have an opportunity to ask questions to our panel and even have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the speaker of their choice. Now, Priya's gift to you, to everyone, like she said, is the five powerful actions women can take to reclaim their health. Now, her special offer is $100 off any of her three, six, or 12-month training packages. So I would jump on that, guys, jump on that. And her special offer for the VIPs, they will have an opportunity to win a free consultation, assessment, and one workout session with Priya. And that is valued at $140. So guys, in order to claim your free gift and find out more about what Priya has to offer, you can go to bit.ly journey to health and fitness. And I will be providing the links their links at the end of the summit as well. So you, if you don't get a chance to write it, we're going to drop it in the chat, but then you will also have an opportunity to see it again at the end. Now, up next, we have Valerie Taylor Best. Valerie is an administrator of the F3 50 Fit and Fabulous Facebook group. She is a retired teacher with a dual certification in deaf education, exceptional children. She is the designer and creator of the most elegant crochet crowns on the East Coast of, and, and her business is like hats, fans, bags, and thangs. Yes, I said that right, thangs, T-H-A-N-G-S. <laughs> her goals are to use her crafts and spiritual gifts to touch young mothers of boys worldwide. She wants to generate resources to help her grandchildren through college and to help less fortunate hearing impaired children pay for hearing aids. Her ability to communicate with the deaf community 
has afforded her the opportunity to interpret for many, many influential persons. And I'm sure you're gonna know these names, many influential persons around the world like Bill Cosby, Michelle Obama, Senator Doyle and mission fields to include Malaysia and Hong Kong. Valerie will be teaching you how to forgive and release for peace. Go ahead, Valerie, take it away. What an opportunity. Thank you so much, Selena. How many of you have had feelings of anger, bitterness, disappointment, sadness, and you've had these emotions for so long that it seems to become a part of you. It seems like you've had it. Uh, it's been overwhelming. You, you, you take the bitterness or you take the, the disappointment and you, you hold it like it's a blanket. You, you nurture it, you dress it up. You, uh, you put a hat on it, you take it to church, you take it to work and you, you put makeup on it, you cover it and, and you feed it and you just hold on to that anger for so long, you don't even know that it's there. Other people know it's there. Other people, and you wonder why relationships are, are not solid or why jobs are, are, are not working. Some things just are not working out. And you wonder why. And we're still holding on to whatever that is that has caused us not to forgive someone, something, some situation, some event in our lives that have caused us to be so uncomfortable for so long that we don't even know it. I lived like that for a very long time, not knowing, and even with the success of recording a CD, recording music vocally, going around speaking to people, and, um, interacting with some uh, very influential people, but still something was missing. And when things like this uh, happen, you attract certain pieces. And so when I was younger, my parents were, were high school sweethearts. My grandmother uh, was a, a very strong spiritual person. My grandfather was a minister. I had all of these powerful influences in my life. I went to private school, but I went to public school when I was in the seventh grade. Well, by the time you're in the seventh grade, there are a lot of um, your hormones are starting, uh, guys are around and you are wondering um, who you are. You're trying to develop that self-identity. Well, at that time, it was when uh, integration started. And so there, were, uh, uh, th there was some tension in the school system. But my experience was not with other races. My, my experience was with my own peers walking into the schoolroom and certain girls saying, well, who is she? Where does she come from? Uh, who, she thinks she cute. What's wrong with her? Where, who's, who her people? Where she live? So they're asking all these questions and, and bitter, just other thoughts and ideas that they had in their own mind about who I was. Girls walking down the hall and, and purposefully knocking me on my shoulder so my books would fall in the floor, trying to be very aggressive, sitting on the school bus, and a, a girl sat behind me. My hair was long, and it was hanging over the, the, the seat of the bus. I smelt something burning. She had a, a, a cigarette lighter and tried to burn my hair while I was on the bus. So I went through all of these kind of pieces uh, as, as a vocalist, I had positions uh, 
leading roles in, in programs and after school one day, this, there were about 15 girls outside. One girl, she started a fight. And my mother through all of this would always say, sweetie, just kill them with kindness. Be real nice, kill them with kindness, be nice. It'll be all right. Well, after that fight and my mother came home, she gave me a little fingernail file and she said, baby, put this in your book bag and you hold it real close to you. You take that fingernail file and you hold it now. Don't leave it in the locker. So we began to see how bitter these girls were. Well, that affected me. By the time I was in the ninth grade, I cut my hair. I shaved my eyebrows off. I said, I'm not going to date a light-skinned guy because if we get married, I'll have light-skinned children and these children will be, they will look like me. I need to I, I need me a chocolate brother so I can have some brown looking children. Maybe they'll be accepted. So we had, a, I, I had a real hard time with that self-identity. And we don't realize that as we move forward, how we carry some of this brokenness inside of us. So we often, things that happen to us in, uh, in our early years, we often carry that bitterness towards our adulthood and we don't know where it comes from. So then we attract what we feel. So I started taking on somebody else's thoughts about who I was. And then I attracted uh, negative relationships or maybe relationships that I didn't really learn the best lessons from. But as time moved on, and even with a solid foundation, with my grandparents, my grandmother, and all the women who were strong, and I saw how successful these ladies were. So I said, wow, look at them. They had beautiful marriages that lasted for so long. I said, what is it? Let me just look. And I learned at that time, the gift that they had was the gift of forgiveness. Those ladies knew how to take dark situations and live in a spirit of forgiveness. They learned how to recognize the things that they could not change. They learned how to release they learned how to forgive, release for peace. Hold up your hands like this. Let me see you all's hands. As a sign language interpreter, I'm going to show you something. This is the sign I want you to think about when you have a problem on forgiving, releasing for peace. This is the sign for forgive. And you know what the sign for this other sign is? Is cleanse. Cleanse. This means clean up and it means forgive. So you forgive and this is the sign for release. It, this is you, this is you holding on to something. Release it. And this is the sign for peace. So I learned to forgive, release for peace with six steps. And we're going to go into these briefly because we only have the 15 minutes and I've already taken up some of that with my story. And yes, coffee, Koofy, thank you. This is how deaf people clap. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. So there are going to be six steps that provide the process of forgiveness. And the first step is this acknowledge. Because often we feel that if we forgive somebody that we're supposed to forget. Oh, no, you don't forget. You cannot forget because unforgiveness does not, it, it does not lie dormant. It plays a big part in your body. If you don't forgive, 
it festers. The, the other piece, the biggest piece that helped me to know that I needed to forgive, I became so ill that I could not move. I went to the doctor, I had biopsies, I, I, I went to a uh, rheumatologist. They thought that I had a uh, arthritis. I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is an autoimmune disorder. And I think they give these autoimmune disorder names because they don't know what else to come up with. But I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis and I had lesions all over my lungs and the doctors told me I wouldn't be able to sing anymore. So I knew then I had to go within myself and develop these steps. And because forgiveness is such a beautiful process, that has been my mantra to develop a sense of forgiveness in any situation. So that first step again is acknowledgement. You are not condoning the, uh, the information. You are doing what the scripture says. It says it gives you the benefits of forgiving. And I'm, I'm going to give you some, some scripture. So write down Proverbs 1430, Matthew 5, 9. These are scriptures just to help you know the benefits of forgiveness. Number two, accept and embrace things that you cannot change. We cannot change people. I cannot undo the negative things that I had experienced. I cannot undo somebody else's experience because I had to forgive those girls for mistreating me like that. I don't know how they were treated. Maybe they were mistreated. Maybe someone told negative things to them. So if we don't forgive people, we begin to embrace the negativity of the spirit that keeps us from forgiving. We don't want to be a part of that. The next one, number three, is determination. Determine whether you're going to forgive or whether you're not going to forgive. I was determined I was not going to forgive some of the experiences. I, I held on to that thing for so long, it felt good. Whenever somebody would say, girl, you need to release. I said, honey, don't tell me that I need to release you. Let me do that on my own. Well, there I had the consequences for that, holding on to it. And there is a scripture. I want you to read Matthew, the, uh, Matthew 18. And that is where the, there was a man who had been forgiven and he had an opportunity to forgive someone else and he didn't. And so God said, okay, I'm going to turn my back towards that and you will live in torment. If we don't forgive, it is a, it is a promise that we will be tormented. We will either torment somebody else. We will be tormented. Our life will be in torment if we don't forgive. The fourth one is self-repair. I went through counseling because as a result of holding on to that bitterness, I, uh, I attracted negative experiences. I was married twice. And people would tell you, oh, honey, she's been married twice. She can't tell you nothing. Oh, honey, that ain't true. When if you don't learn the lesson, you can't say nothing. But if you learn the lesson, you can do it again. And it can be right. So, so I took medication to sleep because it was 30 days when I couldn't sleep. It's all right to take medication if you got to take it. We want to tell somebody they can't take medication. You better take it a little bit. You don't have to live there. But if it is a temporary answer, God works through some medications. Don't beat yourself up if you have to take some medication for a period of time for some release. Step five, learn. Once I rested and I was able to hear God speak to my heart, I was able 
to learn what I needed to learn, be an example for my children so that they would learn how to forgive themselves. Sixth step, forgive. Now the healing inspires the process of forgiveness, then repairing others. And then you become a model of what forgiveness really is. Then you're able to feel when something is coming inside of your heart that is not right. You know it is a time for you to sit back, be in touch with God inside of you. He will let us know what we should and should not do in releasing and forgiving. So I have adopted these six steps and I live by these steps so that I will not put myself in a place of un being unhealthy and holding on to darkness. So now I am the creator and founder of one of the most beautiful places you can ever go to. And that's Bow's Crowns. I put it in the chat. And I'm going to let Selena tell you more about it. And I hope to see you in the VIP room. And we can talk more about these six steps. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valerie. Listen, for all the people that are just now popping in, one of the housekeeping things that we had was if you go up to the upper right-hand corner, you can click on speaker view. That way you will only see the speaker who is talking at the moment. And I tried to upload the speaker sheets for those who said they didn't get it into the chat. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are able to see it or not, but I did put the document there. Now for Valerie, what I got from her was I love, love, love that sign language, the sign she did for forgiveness and that it has a dual meaning. It also means cleanse. I love that. And, and also that forgiveness is for you. It's all about your peace. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Valerie. Now, each speaker came ready today with their specialized gifts and offers, all right? So we have a free gift for everyone a special offer for everyone and a free gift just for our VIPs. Now, if you have not signed up to be a VIP, don't worry about it. You still have time. You have time to upgrade to VIP status so that you can attend the VIP after party. The link is in the chat. The VIPs will have the opportunity to ask questions to all of the speakers on the panel and even have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the speaker of their choice. And over there is where we will be pulling the winner for the VIP free giveaway that contains products from all of our speakers. Now, Valerie's gift to everyone is a tutorial on how to create a crown with three stitches. I mentioned in her bio that she does crochet hats and she calls them crowns and they are absolutely beautiful. So you need to text RAR22 to 336-508-5988 to claim your gift. Now her special offer is free shipping on one of her crowns. So you would just text free shipping to 336-508-5988. And our VIPs will have a chance to win her blue velvet pecan crown. Now I'm from New Orleans and we always had this debate on how you say that word pecan. Some people say pecan, some people say pecan. It's pecan in case you were wondering. Now I have seen this hat and I told her that I wanted one of those for myself. I almost bought it, but I was like, maybe I shouldn't do that. So she said she's gonna do something special for me and I am so excited, I can't wait. So you need to go to valscrowns.company.site to take a look at it and see what more she has to offer. All of the links will be provided again at the end of the summit. Now, are you guys loving this summit as much as I am right now? Are you? Yep. Yeah. Round of applause, thumbs up. I mean, these ladies are really bringing their A game to ensure that you leave here refreshed and renewed. Up next, we have Kimberly Smith Austin. 
Kimberly is an accomplished strategist, consultant, and coach with over 25 years of experience across multiple disciplines, from the boardroom to the playground, guiding professionals on their journey to build robust organizations and lifestyles. She is also what we call a serial entrepreneur and has successfully launched eight businesses since 1999. And she is very passionate about creating systems and solutions to address the marketplace needs. Kimberly transforms the new science of business and health into programs that are simple, easy, and fun. Now she has distinguished herself as a one of a kind real world expert who helps professionals take their business, life and health to the next level. Kimberly is an international speaker, she is a co-author of the book, Millions of Possibilities, and the co-host of the podcast, Made to Inspire. She has used her gift of teaching and has taught at several universities over the last 20 years in undergraduate and graduate business schools across the United States. Now, Kimberly will be teaching you how to rise up and run your business and your bottom line. Take it away, Kimberly. Hey, 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 can you all hear me today? Awesome. I am super excited to be with all of you this afternoon. I'm speaking from my AirPods. If at any time during my presentation, there's a pause or a break, I will take them off and come live to you. First of all, I am so excited to be here. All of these fabulous women have shared things that I think are near and dear to my heart and hopefully to yours as well. Forgive. Absolutely, it is a must. Your health is your wealth, let me tell you that. And so today I'm gonna to talk about so many things that you've heard, but something that you haven't heard. I wanna start by asking all of you if you would take a moment and drop a comment in the section, in the notes, I mean, in the chat, I'm sorry. If you don't know where the chat is, look at the bottom of your screen, you will see the chat box there. I am an interactive trainer, speaker. I like when people talk back to me. I know your cameras are off, but I wanna hear from you. I wanna start by asking this question. How many of you are business owners? If you're a business owner, just chat, drop in the chat, me, 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 I am. And it, maybe if you're not a business owner, maybe you're thinking about it. Or maybe you were a business owner at one point in time in your life. Today, the purpose of our, of our comment, I can't speak, I'm so excited. Let me calm down and breathe. <sighs> Yes, 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 yes. Sometimes I need to do that. As you can see, I have lots of energy. I've already been out and I've gotten my movement on. The title of my talk today is Rise Up and Run. For those of you who don't know me, I want to tell you that I am a runner and I have been running now for six years every single day, but I've been running for over 40 years. So when I say rise up and run, the first thing that most people think is running. No, I don't want to do that. I'm here to tell you it's not about the physical act of running, meaning with your arms moving, your legs in motion, but it is. Rise up and run. We're in 2022 and what a blessing it is. I want you to know that we had the opportunity in, in 2021 and 2020 to experience something we've never, ever seen in our lives. A national, a global pandemic that shook our world. And if you're here right now today, you are a survivor. And I'm really excited to be here. But I want to know how many of you in the chat are excited about what 2022 is going to bring. And I know so many said, you know what, 2020 wasn't what I thought it was, or what I wanted it to be, or what it could be but 2022 is gonna be on fire and I am with you. But I wanna give you some information about what happened. We know the pandemic happened. And let me tell you what it did to the business climate. Number one, it caused people to rethink how we live. Today, we're on a Zoom. Many of you probably never heard of Zoom. I started teaching as an online professor in 2001. So I've been online for over 20 years and I was excited to see the world come and join me on this journey. Now the pandemic caused us to rethink how we live, how we act and how we operate. Last year, there was also something called the great resignation. People started leaving their traditional jobs like no other. 
because they learned how to work at home. They learned how to be independent. They appreciated the flexibility and the time with their family. And as a result, 4.4 million people started new businesses. Whoo, that's a huge number. And if you don't know, during times like crises, these are when new businesses are started, formed, developed. And I want you to know that if you don't have a business today, doesn't mean you can't. Maybe you're 50, maybe you're 60, 70, 80. Those are some of the forerunners in starting new businesses. So if you're here today and you own a business, heads up, kudos to you. And for those of you that are on the fence thinking about it, now is the time. Now is the time, unlike any other time in the past. Now, I want you to know that I left corporate America back in 1999. I spent many years as a consultant, working some, for some of the major corporations, working with CEOs, building strategy, building plans and things of that nature. But in 1999, I decided I didn't wanna do that anymore. Well, not quite do it anymore, meaning I didn't wanna do it for the corporation. They were billing me out between 500 and $750 an hour. And I knew that if I just went back to the table with my skills that I had learned back to the table and asked for maybe $400 an hour or $450 or $300, I could build my own business. And here I am over 20 years still standing and still successful. I'll tell you, entrepreneurship is the way to go. But I believe even all. And the reason I say that is because things like the pandemic have created situations for us that says when the world shut down work for a company and their door closed, that you would be without a job. Do you all know that statistics show that individuals are more likely to make over $100,000 when they start their own business versus working in the corporate America? Now, I'm not here to discourage you from working in corporate America, but what I'm here to encourage you to do is maybe consider adding to your bottom line. Maybe consider building something alongside your nine to five. See, I believe rich, famous, successful people have more than one source of income. And I know if you're here today, you're probably one of those. You probably know that millionaires have more than seven sources of income but I wanna back up and give you some couple tips. Now, building a business is hard. You know, I have a 15 year old son and he says to me, mom, you know, working at a nine to five, I'm gonna get a job. And you know, I believe in entrepreneurship as I've been teaching that at the university, I've been living that forever. And I says, you know, honestly, entrepreneurship is harder than working a nine to five. You are your own boss. You have to do everything from the beginning to the end, but there's freedom that happens as a result of that. There's beauty that you can create. And best of all, you get to leave a legacy. So I want to thank you. I want you to think about what does it take? The first thing it takes to build your own business, whether you're existing business owner or you're launching is belief. And I know many of you here on the call are women of faith. And we know that belief is everything. And there's three things you need to believe in. Number one, yourself. God is giving you a talent and a gift. And most likely the gift, the talent, the passion that resides inside of you was dropped into your spirit by the heavenly father. Now, the question is, what will you do with it? Belief in yourself. Number two is belief in your product or service that you're putting out to the world. If you own a business, you have to believe in it 100%. Because if you don't, who will? And the third one is believe in the people that you're meant to serve. You know, there's an expression that says your bank account is a 100% reflection of the people that you serve. So if you're out here in the world and you're serving other people, your bank account will show you. Zig Ziglar said years ago, he says, when you want to see growth, if you help more people, you will get everything your heart desires. So when you're thinking about building a business, I want to encourage you to start with your own belief. And don't let the barriers of, I'm too old, I don't matter, I don't have experience, don't let that stop you. Because today we're in a new economy. In fact, I have a course that is all about belief. And that's a whole nother conversation. 
But I want to go to my second point, which is business. Right now, we're in a unique time. There's something called the knowledge-based business. And right now, people are selling their knowledge for money. Chat, if you have some knowledge, some information that you have and hold in your heart and your head that people could probably benefit from, drop it in the chat. Just say, it's me. Maybe drop your business idea. Not, I don't want to steal it, but just drop it in the chat. Because let me tell you, right now, this is a $3.5 billion industry. If you are not selling the information that's inside of your brain, now is the time. Now is the time. People are bored. People are sitting at home. They're looking for the information that you have. And guess what? All it takes from you is a process, a system put in place, and you're able to deliver. Did you know that more than millions of people every day are searching the internet? They're looking for your experience your knowledge. They want a quick fix. They don't want to spend the time and the failures that maybe you encountered to bring them the information that they need. I want to encourage you to use that information and go out and sell it to the world. You know, you can fund your dream by simply sharing what you already have. What I love is you build a business on what you love. A program, it's called From Passion to profit, from passion to paycheck, from passion to passive income. Don't sleep on the information that's inside of you. And I want you to think about it. It's not about selling. It's about building around your purpose. God has given you a purpose and we want to use it and tap into it. If you've ever felt sleep, if you've ever felt lost or that you weren't walking in your purpose, it's probably because you fully aren't. Now is the time, friends. I want to now shift onto the brand. When we talk about branding, I know many of you have heard the term. You've seen it. You know what it is. But I want you to think about what I believe is the most important thing. Coca-Cola has a brand. McDonald's has a brand. PepsiCo has a brand. And in years past, people who work for those companies, they stood out and showed that I work for McDonald's. I work for Pepsi-Cola. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to start by branding yourself first. I am Kimberly Smith Austin. My website is KimberlySmithAustin.com. First thing, buy your name as a domain name right now today, if you haven't already. Because even though you work for a company, you have a brand, your name is what stands. When people go search, they're going to search for you first. Now, I own currently four businesses, and they all have a brand. But when you look for my name, you'll find me first associated with those brands, but my brand never goes before my name. So keep that in mind. And when you're branding, I want you to brand as authentically you. Show up as you are. If you ever see me on social media, I, one of my businesses is a wellness company. You're going to see, I encourage people to move. It's about movement because movement is medicine. And when you are healthy, you're happy and there's nothing you can't accomplish. And I speak that on the forefront. On top of that, I talk about business and how what we do impacts the world and we have the possibility. But when you see my videos, whether it's a Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, it's always branded in my name. Because here's a couple of things that branding will do for you. Branding brings acceptance the world would begin to accept you as a person you are, especially when you show up authentically you. Branding reflects strategy, meaning you've taken some time to think about who you are and how you want to impact the world, how you want to show up to the world. But branding also brings improvement. If you're looking to make improvement in who you are, this is an opportunity because it's going to show that you're strong, you're intelligent, you're bright, and it increases your chances of bringing people to your business. Brand yourself, friends, because that's going to make an impact and help you actually build your bottom line. That's my last point. The bottom line, what is that? The dollars in the cents, friends. The dollar in the cents. What are we doing as we build our business? We build our belief. We start branding ourselves. 
And then we start looking at how does that impact our bottom line? I know if you're here in life, regardless if you have a business or not, your bottom line matters. That's why we have budgets. That's why we do the things we do so that we can create a financial resource for our family so that we can experience life. We can travel. We can enjoy life as it is. And so when you think about the bottom line, I want to give you a little definition version of it, though. This is your net income. This is the money you're making. And for some, if you're interested in passive income, that's the money you make while you're asleep. That's what you want to work towards. If you're not doing it today, you should. And in my course that I'm going to be offering here to you all today, there's a 50%. I'm going to show you ways to create passive income for yourself. No matter what age you are, no matter what your experience is, I believe that you can do it. Now, here's the thing. Are you making money on your ideas? Are you making money on your knowledge? But I want you to think about how do you make money in all aspects of your life, whether it's a product or service, because I believe everyone has something unique and something different to offer to the world. And here's the truth. Even if what you have isn't unique, even if it's not different, you are different. You are unique. And you're going to resonate with people in ways that Selena can't, Renee can't. And that's what we want to recognize. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are unique. We are royal priesthood. There's nothing that we can't do. And if you think about Lydia in the Bible, the Proverbs 31 woman, she did it all. She showed up. Everything. And ladies, I want to encourage and let you know that you can have it all. It's time to rise up and run. And here's my question. Are you ready to refresh and renew and experience life at the next level? Back to you, Selena. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Round of applause, guys. I told you. I told you these speakers are bringing their A game. And what I love about what Kimberly spoke about was Consider building something alongside your bottom line, something other than your nine to five, because multiple streams of income is where it's at. And, and then the question that she asked was, what are you doing with the gift that God gave you? What, what are you doing with it, right? And brand yourself first. Yes, those were my good takeaway nuggets. Now, guys, like I said before, each speaker came ready today with their specialized gifts and offers, and they're going to have one free gift for everyone, a special offer for everyone, and a free gift just for our VIPs. I keep saying this, but hey, there's still time to upgrade to VIP status so that you can attend the after party. The link will be put in the chat box because the VIPs will have an opportunity to ask questions to, to our panel and to even have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the speaker of their choice. And that's where we will be pulling the winner for the free VIP giveaway that contains products from all of our speakers. Now, Kimberly's gift to everyone is five steps to refresh and renew your business. And her special offer is She's offered 50% off her business bootcamp. She, you know, the business bootcamp is $497. The value of that bootcamp is $997. And she said, in that bootcamp, you will learn how to earn money, passive income, all that good stuff. Have that multiple streams of income. And our VIPs will have a chance to win her Millions of Possibilities ebook. So you will go to bit.ly forward slash Kimberly Smith Austin to learn more about what she has to offer. And again, like I said, the links will drop them in the chat. And then I'll also at the very end have a big slide that shows everybody's link so you can take some time to write them down if you haven't had an opportunity to write them down up to this point. Now, I'd like to also let everybody know that you will be sent a survey after this summit and we will be very honored and pleased and we would just love if you gave your honest feedback, right? Because Renee, this summit dropped into her spirit. This is the very first one, but we will be continuing to do these every year. The summit is going to grow beyond measure. I am positive of it. Now, I have been blown away by these speakers. What about you guys? Let me see some activity in the chat. How are you feeling about these speakers? Let me tell you, you know, you saw my notes. I've been taking notes and I've got a lot of great nuggets so far. But guess what? 
Now it's my turn to be in the spotlight. <laughs> All right, here we go. I am Selena Borns, the founder of the Lady Circle of Success Network, which is a community built to help women activate their minds in life. I help women develop a 180 degree, degree identity of who they are regarding their mindset, their lifestyle, their confidence, and even in their businesses so that they can become more confident versions of themselves and able to pursue their purpose with my Polish Your Mirror Blueprint. I also host a podcast called the Polish Your Mirror Podcast, and I am the author of a best-selling book, All That Glitters, From Selfishness and Despair to Restoration, where I chronicle my self-awareness journey and how to improve communication in blended families. I am a certified speaker through Les Brown's Power Voice program and a graduate of Proctor Gallagher Institute's Thinking into Results program under the leadership of John Tellerico. Now, as I said before, I help women develop a 180 degree, degree identity of who they are. Now, if I ask you to stand up right now, stand up right now and take a 180 degree turn, you would be facing in the opposite direction of where you are now. And when it comes to making changes in your life that stick, that is exactly what you need to do to be successful because too often we get stuck in doing those 360 degree turns and we wonder why everything looks familiar and there is no change in our lives, right? Now, around this time every year, the beginning of the, of the year, here it is January, as I scroll through social media, I notice this trend. I see women proclaiming that saying goodbye to the previous year means that they were saying goodbye to their old selves because the past year for them was full of heartache, pain, and unhappiness. These women are saying that the past year taught them many valuable lessons about learning to love and be in love with themselves and that they are leaving hurt in the past and moving forward as the best version of themselves for this new year. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, don't feel bad because guess what? They also resonate with me. I have said the exact same things, especially when I got closer to the 50 year old mark and my children left the nest. You know, I was at the point of feeling like I really just couldn't see myself clearly and trying to figure out who I was. Now, all of us are born with a clean mirror, but as we navigate our lives, our mirrors get smudged and full of fingerprints. No matter how old you are, your fingerprint, your mirror may have fingerprints of your parents' ideas for you, fingerprints of failed relationships, fingerprints of hurt, shame, and negative self-talk. And as a result, you are walking around looking into the mirror of your life that has become so dirty that you can't even see yourself. Now, when you walk into a room, you can't see yourself, right? I mean, you can see the room, you can see the people in the room, but what you are projecting into that room about yourself is coming from the internal mirror of how you see yourself. That mental picture, it comes from snapshots of moments of your life that are stored in your subconscious mind. You have snapshots of pain, pleasure, and love, and all are mental pictures you took that continuously play out on the screen of your life through your actions. By visualizing an image of yourself at your best, you send a message that your subconscious mind accepts as a command. And then it goes above and beyond to coordinate your thoughts, your words, and your actions so that it fits a pattern consistent with that picture that you create. So if you visualize a new self image of yourself and you create a new picture of what you can be, you are sending messages to your subconscious mind that accepts it as a new truth and it starts coordinating your thoughts and your actions to live consistent with that new image. Now, I made the decision to polish my mirror, meaning that I let go. I let go of everyone else's thoughts, everyone else's opinions, everyone else's direction for my life. And I decided to pursue my dreams and make full use of my potential. Now, you may be asking the question, well, how do I activate my mind to win in life? You know, that was my title, by the way, if I hadn't said it, activate your mind to win in life. The first thing you need to do is take a moment and consider all the things that your mind has brought you. Think about it, your work, your relationships, and all your perspective of life. 
It all comes to you because of using your mind. Activating your mind is simply activating your potential. It is important to make sure that your inner dialogue remains set on success and achievement. Now, I'm sure you've heard the saying, attitude is everything, right? Well, this is a very true statement because the perspective you take in any situation ultimately determines your outcome. We live in a world where it can be difficult to manifest what we want. And your mindset is the lens that allows you to see what you want in this world. Your mindset is something that is so easy to change. You can change it with awareness, practice, and determination. It's the general perspective you have on life and how you react to various situations. Your mindset decides if you live a fulfilling and abundant life. Now, our most common mistake is to place all of our attention and energy on what is missing in our lives. So take a moment, drop in the chat one, just one of the areas in your life where you tend to focus on more of what you don't have. Just drop that in the chat, if you will. And when you think about that one area of your life where you tend to focus on what you don't have, I want you to reflect on, the, on that one thing and then switch, switch your thinking to focus on what you do want. Because when you switch your thinking to what you want, you begin to paint a clear picture in your mind of what you desire, and it becomes easier for you to find what you're looking for. So if you are hoping to bring pros prosperity into your life, it's important to learn to think like a winner. You need to be very specific about what you're trying to accomplish. Do a personal inventory by taking stock of when you've been the most prosperous in your life. What are your major successes? What have you done well? What are you most proud of? Use your mind to see the power you have in your life. When you take responsibility to tackle life's challenges on your own terms, it gives you so much strength. The only limitation you will ever have is the limitation you put on yourself. I mean, we tend to look at others who have achieved great success and think they have some sort of secret, right? They got a magic sauce. To be honest, when I started coaching, I would sometimes have to just get off of social media because it made me feel so bad looking at others who had accomplished so much and, and I was just feeling like I was struggling in my journey. But when I switched the way I thought by telling myself, you know what? They weren't born knowing that stuff. They had to learn it. And if they can learn it, so can I. See, whatever someone else has done, you can do it too. The only difference between you and them are the limitations you put on yourself. Your mind is the greatest power in all creation. And since you are in control of your own thinking, I want you to decide to not spend any time thinking negativity about your abilities. Both positivity and negativity are choices that we make. So choose to think about the bright side in life. Now, let me ask you this question. Have you had a moment in your life that just stopped you in your tracks and made you reevaluate everything? For me, it was November 2011, right before Thanksgiving. I was at home recuperating from a bad cold, and I went to the bathroom one morning to freshen up. Now, part of my morning routine is to use a daily inhaler because I have asthma. And on this particular moment, I took a hit of that inhaler and I immediately started having difficulty breathing. I felt like my throat was just closing up. I started saying, I can't, I can't breathe. I can't breathe as, you know, as best as I could. And my children came running into the room. They were scared. And I told my husband, take me to the hospital. Honestly, you guys, I felt like that day I was going to die. Now, as I was getting in the car, I remember thinking, really? <laughs> really, is this how my life is going to end? You know, and at the hospital, when I got there, you know, they gave me a shot of epinephrine and immediately, oh, I could breathe so freely. That moment was my near-death experience and it was an eye-opener. It made me reflect on my life and think about what I had accomplished and what legacy, what mark, what stamp would I leave in this world? It made me reevaluate what mattered most to me. So my question to you is, when you are faced with the end of your life, what is it you would like to be known for? 
Les Brown says, the graveyard is the richest place on earth because it's where you will find all the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled, all because someone was too afraid to take that first step to carry out their dream. I am here to remind you to rob the grave of your gifts. Stop being afraid to take steps towards your desires. To win in life, you must have a plan. This goes back to what Kimberly was talking about, your gifts and having a plan. When you get rid of fat, like Priya talked about, and develop the muscles in your body, what do you do? You eat right and you start exercising, right? Well, the mind is developed in the same way. You must activate it to achieve your goals. Now let's do a little math. I know you didn't come here for a math lesson, but we're gonna do just a little bit. Most of us have 40 hour work weeks, unless you're blessed to be retired and you don't have to work. I know if you're an entrepreneur, you work more than that. So I'm not even gonna include you guys. Now, if you total the hours in a year and subtract how many hours you sleep, let's say for, for this example, you sleep eight hours a night you will find that you have almost 6,000 hours that you are awake. Now of these 6,000 hours, you spend less than 2,000 of them at work. Now this leaves you with 4,000 hours a year when you are not working or sleeping. Let's call these discretionary hours because you can do whatever you want during that time. When put in this perspective, can't you see the potential you have to get a lot done in your life? What I want you to do is devote just one hour a day, preferably in the morning, five days a week to activating your mind. On a sheet of paper, write down your present goal in life. Think of your goal as a problem waiting to be solved. Since your future depends on how you go about achieving that goal, you need to write down as many ideas as you can on how you can achieve it. Try to think of about 20 things every day. For example, when I started training with the Proctor Gallagher Institute, my goal was to get up one hour earlier than usual to meditate and read. Now, I'm not a morning person, right? So what I did was I took my phone, that's where everybody has their alarm nowadays, and I put it in a whole nother room so that when the alarm went off, I had to physically get out of the bed to go turn it off. And that means I was up. I was able to accomplish that goal. And when you start any new habit, it's not easy because at first your mind will be reluctant to get out of its comfort zone. But as you think and come up with ideas, you will be embedding your goal into your subconscious mind, which starts your whole mind body action system working. And you could, they're gonna get, get together and start working to move toward reaching that goal and you can actively plan your life. Now, if you're going to be a winner in life, you need to think like a winner because thinking is the key to success. When you can master your thoughts, you can achieve any goal you set for yourself. And when you take on this challenge that I'm giving you and start each day by thinking, it puts you in the driver's seat because just one great idea can completely change your life. You see, successful people are not people who don't have problems. They have just learned how to solve their problems. And when you activate your mind, you learn to solve your problems. Now, I know I have a good audience for this one. Who remembers polishing silver? I do. And when you polish silver, you put something on it that causes a reaction to lift the, the tarnish, right? And when you take a white cloth and you wipe the silver, you see positive evidence that the product has done its job because it turns black, giving you a clear indication that the tarnish has been removed and the silver looks brand new. Back in the day, our grandmothers used to do the same thing with mirrors they will put a product on the cloth and polish those mirrors, polish them good to make them clear, streak free and able to provide a pure reflection of what is in front of it. So I say to you, it's important to keep your mirror polished so that you can continue to see you and all the wonderful things you have accomplished and that you are capable of. Don't underestimate yourself. Realize that deep in yourself, you have a reservoir of great ability and even genius that can be tapped into if you just dig deep enough. Ralph Waldo, Waldo Emerson said, the only person you are destined to become is the one you decide to be. So don't let insecurities and self-doubt keep holding you back. There are many people in this world who have gone before us and have made their dreams come true. Why not be one of them? Demonstrate faith in your ideas, strengthen your abilities and use your talents. The world 
is waiting on you. Today, I am encouraging you to clean the way you talk to yourself, clean the way you think about yourself, grab your mirror and go out and manifest all the great and wonderful things you want in life. Don't let anything stop you from accomplishing your goals. Pursue that dream you've been thinking about for so long. It's time to overcome all the limiting beliefs that are holding you back and conquer your fears. Remember, you are the creator of your life, not a manager of your circumstances. What are you going to do differently this year? That's my question. What are you going to do differently this year? And as I always sign off on my podcast, I'd like to say, keep your mirror polished because no one can do it better than you. Now, like I say, in between each speaker, everybody came here with gifts and offers, and so did I. There's still time to upgrade to the VIP status that you can, so you can attend the after party and uh, ask questions to the panel and even have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the speaker of your choice. And over there, we will be pulling a free gift for a lucky vip -er that will contain products from all of our speakers. Now, my free gift to everyone is my free video training that teaches you three ways to overcome the fear that limits your potential. My special offer is 70% off, you heard that right, 70% off my Polish Your Mirror Blueprint, which is valued at $19.97. This is a six week program that provides you with lessons to lead you on the journey of winning in life and a thorough understanding of what you need to do to create a mind that naturally creates and attracts success. Now, this offer will be good for one week only. Our VIPs will have a chance to win my Mirror Reflections five-day self-improvement challenge, which is worth $50. They will win that and have that for free. It's awesome. So you would have to visit bit.ly forward slash Selena Bournes PYM to learn more about these and other stuff that I have to offer. And as always, I will be putting up a slide at the end to... Uh, let everybody see what everybody's link is. Now, for the VIPers, we're getting close to the end. We're getting ready to do a drum roll and have our keynote speaker. But once we complete this portion of the summit, we will be going into a separate VIP breakout room, right? You should have received an email with a link for the VIP, but I'm gonna let Renee explain a little bit more about that at the end, okay? Now, we have reached the pivotal point in our summit. It is time for our keynote speaker. So I want you to take a moment, stand up. Well, I can't stand up because then you won't see me. Stand up, stretch. And while you are standing, say out loud, I am ready to be renewed. Our keynote speaker is Candy Jeter. Candy uses her emotional mindscape method to help successful women in midlife train their minds to master their emotions without doubting themselves so that they can surpass their goals without stress and overwhelmed. Candy is a licensed hypnotherapist specializing in weight release, relationship recovery, and anxiety reduction. By using rapid transformational therapy is what she uses. She is the author of two books, Seven Steps to Letting Go, Even When It Seems Impossible, and 25 Thoughts About Your Destiny. Her program, Freedom in 21 Days, helps women reduce emotional and physical weight through hypnosis and coaching. Take it away, Candy. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for just joining in because I know how precious our weekends are. Um, those who are here are really showing how much you love yourself and when you invest time money and energy into your well-being do you know that that is the highest form of self-love that is one of the pillars that we're going to be talking about but sometimes things and situations take us away from ourselves and being here with Valerie bringing out um, her story and telling us about how to forgive that's so important in regards to self-love with Priya talking about health you know we hear about health a lot 
and it goes in one ear and out the other and we're not paying any attention until we either we can't breathe we can't walk we can't see we can't talk it always causes us to lose something before we pay attention to our health right then we want to jump on the bandwagon well then renee talks about affirming affirming means stating a fact and a lot of the times we forget the facts of who we are where we come from and the power that we possess in order to make the changes that we need to make and then we have kimberly where she talked about how our business and our brand really boils down to us who we are and how we present ourselves to the world how we interact with other people we are our brand and that's really important because when you want to go and you want to persuade people to do a thing that's best for them it's very important that we are doing and being what we say we want others to do and be and then Selena, when she talks to us about polishing our mirror and about really being, you know, clear about who we are and all of the wonderful information, really, you know, if you haven't experienced being on her podcast, it is wonderful. I really enjoyed it. And she's calm and professional, and I really and enjoy the way that she put it all together. So thank you and thank you for emceeing for us today. You're doing a beautiful job. Thank you so much. So back to situations that take us away from ourselves. When I think of a situation and as I'm telling my story, you can think of a situation where it, it came up for you, where a situation took you away from who you thought you were. And I know for me, like most women, it happened when I was married. I got married at 21. We were very young. Now, Renee said that too. And um, I know like 10 years later, I was just trying to figure out, you know, like, what have I done? Because, you know, it seemed as though it was a complete failure, a disappointment, right? And I remember when I transitioned into literally wanting to get out because I knew that I had to. I didn't really feel like I had a choice at that time. Well, I, I didn't know who I could talk to. So the first person that came to my mind was my grandmother. Of course, I could have talked with my mother, but I'd already talked with her and she didn't say what I wanted to hear. So I said, well, let me call grandma. Let me see what grandmother has to say with her infinite wisdom. So I was home with my kids and my husband was coming in the door. I made a beeline out the door and I jumped in my car so that I could have some privacy. And I decided that I wanted to call her up on my phone and and I called and she she said hello I'm in a grocery store parking lot by the way it's a summer night and when I heard her voice I was so excited I, I just started you know grandma I just want to tell you something and I want to know what you think and I, I was wanting her advice I wanted her to tell me what to do and I told her all of the things that I had been going through because I had not previously told her that so I said, well, by the time she hears all of this, she's going to certainly tell me exactly what I need to do. And so I, I told her and I was breathless. I was, you know, crying and, you know, she, she was quiet. I, I didn't even know whether or not she was there. And when I, when I said, Grandma, did you, did you hear what I said? Did you hear where I said all of the things that he'd done and, 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 and how I feel and, and, and what I think I need to do? And she said, yeah, I heard you. I said, so, so what do you think I should do? She said, broaden your shoulders. And I, I didn't want to hear. I, I was like, so so." Our, I didn't ask her, dare not ask her what she meant. I, I just said, okay. But in my mind, I was like, is she telling me to take more? Is she telling me to toughen up and, and, and just stay and take more? So I didn't know what she meant, but I did say, okay. 
And I could tell that she knew that I wanted to know more, but she knew that I wasn't ready to hear more because she knew that I had more lessons to learn. So as I speak with you today, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to answer three questions about what self-love really is. And I'm going to cover the three pillars of self-love. And we're going to do a mini hypnotherapy meditation session. So what is the difference between love of self and self-love? Think about it. Because many Christians have been taught that we should not become lovers of ourselves because, you know, the Bible talks about in the last days, people will become lovers of themselves. And so we're taught to go outside of ourselves, to give to other people, to be kind to other people, to forgive other people, to help other people, to heal other people, to love other people, to do all of these things for other people. And as women, we're taught that even more. To whom much is given, much is required. And women are given so much power. After all, we carry life. We bring life into the world. Life comes through us. But I learned that without preserving the self, that we really can't do any of those things. And I think that a lot of people forget about preserving the self so that you can serve others. And that's what we're going to talk about. So I want you to write this down. If you're not taking notes, you're probably wasting your time because a lot of things you may or may not remember, you may want to go back and you may want to, you know, even if you go back and look at the replay, writing down what you hear now is going to be very important. So self-love, and this is my definition, equals total devotion to improving self to be of use to others without losing who you are. Self-love equals total devotion to improving yourself, not other people, improving yourself to be of use to others without losing who you are. Now, the difference between self-love and the love of self is almost like the difference between just being concerned with not dying, right? You ever heard somebody say, you know, I, I just don't want to die, but they are afraid to live. So when you love yourself, it's not that you're just trying to stay alive. You are doing everything you can to live because you know that other people are being edified by your presence. You're feeding others and you're feeding them from the overflow because you've already fed yourself. When you are a lover of self, you're only concerned about just yourself. And when things get thick, when things get hard, you bail out, you quit. When you, when you love yourself, you get up and you move your body. Because you know that in order to serve other people, you need to be able to stand up. You need to be able to sit down. You need to be able to stoop. You need to be able to bend. So you got to get up. You got to move. Now, that's not the only way because there are a lot of people who can't do those things and they serve people in other capacities. But if you have the capacity to use your body to aid other people, exercise it and give it fuel, do that. That's love that other people can benefit from. Then loving, your, loving others from yourself rather than of yourself. So when you love from yourself, 
You're not even thinking about it because you're putting all of the things inside of you that you need to put inside of you in order to keep it moving. So how does environment pull us away from ourselves and how can we get back? So a lot of the times you you do all of these things to love yourself and then a crisis comes. And then you find yourself getting further and further and further away from yourself. Well, being consistent. For example, our father is in a crisis. He's toiling with which way to go at this point. And, and we're right along there with him, right? He's right in the next room. And the doctors are saying, you know, there's nothing they can do. And we're having to have these hard conversations. We're having to be here for unpredictable moments. Sometimes we may not even be able to eat or get a drink of water. But making up in my mind that no matter what, I have to stay hydrated. I have to get up and go work out, regardless of what's happening. Sounds selfish? No. Because when late nights come, when it's time to be in a room where you can't get out and you're properly hydrated and and you've had your meditation, you've affirmed, you've prayed, and you have fueled your body with good fuel, you've loved yourself, you've nurtured your, your relationships, and you know all is well. You've checked in. You've done the things that you need to do. It gives you more energy. Pour into yourself before you do anything so that you can be of service to others. How can we save ourselves while helping others? Well, the word says to work out your own salvation and to study your self approve and Socrates says to know thyself is to know God a lot of the times we think God is outside of us and those who work with me this is not just a mindset This is a lifestyle where you know that you and God are not separate. There is no separation except your unbelief. Unbelief in what? Unbelief in a denomination. Unbelief in an idea. Unbelief in what? Unbelief in yourself. Once you stop believing in yourself, do you know that's? not believing in God automatically. You've stopped believing in God the moment you don't believe in yourself. Oh, I don't think I can do that. You don't believe in God then. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to lose that weight. You don't believe in God. You cannot say that you believe in God and yet you don't believe in yourself because you and God are not separate. This is why self-love is imperative because the moment that you feel that you're separated from God, that is what we call sin. Not smoking or drinking or, you know, doing all of these things that you've been taught not to do. That's self-destruction and eventually that leads to separation. But instant separation in the moment is When you stop believing that you cannot change your life. And one of the things that I'm going to talk about is how to recycle negative experiences for fuel. Before we get into these three pillars, the soul is connected to source. And your experiences are also connected. And the mind is going to reflect on past experiences that shape your perceived reality. By the way, my tagline is reconstruct the world by reconstructing your mind. 
Everything happens in the imagination first before it happens in reality. And what are those first few letters of imagination? Image. Image. The way you see yourself is how your life will play out. Not how others see you, how you see yourself determines how you see out there. These lenses that I have on, they are specifically prescribed to my visual needs. Your image of yourself is specifically prescribed to who you think you are. You can change your prescription. You can see things differently, but not until you change the concept you have of yourself. So we have these businesses that we want people to frequent. And when people see our businesses, they get excited. When people hear us talk about our businesses, they get excited. But the closer people get to us, the more they step into the aura of the energetic field that we produce out of ourselves. They feel how we feel about us. This is why it is so important. Yeah, you might need to fake it for a while, but you gotta grow. You gotta move beyond that and you have to start being it. And so in order to be it, the first pillar of self-love is knowing yourself. So many times we try to know other people because we want to please them. We want to have things in common with them. We want to be accepted by them. We want them to, you know, we want them to look at us a certain way. We want them to think that we're something, right? And the moment that you go up here in the brain, in the mind, and you begin to calculate, you leave the heart of being. You think from the mind, you be from the heart. I always say, I'll tell people, you ever hear people who talk about uh, uh, someone who has, is really good in sports, and they say, wow, you know, he has a lot of heart. That means he forgets all about what he has on, the jersey he's wearing. He forgets about the team colors. He's forgetting about everything. He's out there on the field or on the court. And he is putting his whole self into that activity so that he can achieve something that means more to him than just winning the game. It's in his heart. So when you engage in relationships, when you engage in your businesses, are you just trying to make a dollar? Are you just trying to you know, posture yourself? Or are you truly being authentic? Well, the way to be authentic is knowing yourself. My mother used to say when I would always try to strategize in my marriage in order to, to get what I wanted. She said, you never have to worry about what somebody else is going to do when you know who you are and what you're going to do no matter what. So that keeps you from being preoccupied. What are they going to do? What are they going to say? That's not, that's not love. That's not practicing love. And you're not actually giving someone what they want when you're constantly thinking about what they're doing, what they're saying, because you're not even feeling them. In order to hear beyond people's words and even their actions, in order to feel them, you have to come from the heart. And in order to come from the heart, you have to know who you are. You have to accept who you are, understand who you are. What does knowing who you are even means? Studying yourself, you using your higher self as a guide. What is your higher self? Some people say God, right? 
But I like to talk to people who don't even believe in God. Some people say, oh, I only work with, uh, with people who are believers. Right? No. No. You're putting yourself in a box. There's so many people out here who really need to connect with you. God works through you, not a belief system. God doesn't care whether anyone believes in God or not, because God is God. God doesn't care. God doesn't need anyone to recruit or, or say, you know, tell everybody about who God is. What, what, what your assignment is, is to just be this vessel that God can come through. And in order to do that, then you must use your higher self as a guide. Who is your higher self? The part of you that wants what's best for you. And regardless of what you find, you must not be ashamed. And you must be able to separate the truth from everything that taints it. Well, what taints the truth? Anything that stops you from believing in you. So if you're in a situation and that situation has you feeling hopeless, there's some lies that you've bought into. A lie that you can't move as fast or think as fast or you're not as good or that this is the last chance that you have at happiness or love or that this is the last chance that you're ever going to have to uh, make an impact. So anything that you feel that you're not able to do, your higher self, God, is always there to guide you. But if you doubt that you have access to that or that that is separate from you, you're going to have a hard time being consistent with that. This is what leads to intentional power. I talk about the three pillars of self-love that lead to intentional power. Intentional power is knowing that I and the Father are one. Intentional power is knowing that when people look at you, they're looking at the Father. Intentional power is knowing that no matter where you go, God is there working through you, pushing you, giving you the fuel that you need. The second pillar is improving the self. So that first pillar is knowing the self. The second pillar is improving the self, right? The first pillar, knowing the self, why? Knowing the self, you automatically know others, whether you think you do or not. Why? Because you're going to be feeling them as they come to you. Second pillar, improving the self so that you can be useful to others. This is intentional, Improving the self so that you can be useful to others. Humans are at their best when they're useful to others. Have you ever heard when you were a kid, a parent say, child, go make yourself useful. Make yourself useful. That is so important because you know that if people are around you too long and they prove useless, it is not even good for them. So when you're doing things for your kids all the time, when you're never letting them fail, when you're always trying to help somebody, when you're always trying to anticipate a need, when you're always trying to make yourself useful out of fear of not being accepted, you're really useless because you're getting in the way of other people's ability to improve themselves, to make themselves useful. Study yourself, right? Work out your own salvation. Look for opportunities that are going to call on your power, your intentional power, not just the power you want to call upon when you want to be accepted or when you want to be seen or when you want to do something really surface. But when you really want to serve a purpose, you are paying attention to what is it that needs me 
in this moment. That way you're not burned out, you're not resentful, you're not unforgiving, you're not trying to figure out, you're not confused, you're not left hanging. Oh, I always do everything for everybody and they never do this back. I hate to hear that because it's really not a compliment. So if any of you are saying it, stop saying it. Because what you're saying is, is that I don't know myself well enough to guide my intentional power in the direction that it needs to be in so that I can be of use to people who really need me. So stop saying that. Oh, I always, I'm the giver. Do you know giving is a masculine energy? Receiving is a feminine energy. So if you're a woman and you're always giving, you're in the masculine and you're out of balance and you're going to be sick and you're going to be tired and you're going to be resentful and forgiveness is going to be hard to come by. Health is going to be hard to come by. Business is going to be hard to come by. Affirming yourself is going to be hard to come by. So those who love themselves have a strong desire to do just that, to improve themselves. However, it's not just for them, it's for others. The more skillful you are at something, the easier you make life for others. Write that down. The more skillful, skillful I am at something, the easier I am going to make things easier for others in their life. The easier that that I make it for others, I'm being a blessing to others. I'm not looking for anything from them. I'm just dropping skills and I'm sharing tools and I'm not going to be resentful if somebody doesn't appreciate it because it's not coming from fear. It's not coming from loneliness. It's not coming from inadequacy. It's not coming from wanting to be included. It's coming from the higher self. So many women have actually, you know, been guilty. I've been guilty. Let me do this for them so that they don't have to struggle. Let me do this for them so that I can make it easier. If you're not intentional about that, you're enabling. You're being codependent. And when people are codependent on each other, that's where resentment sets in. And that's where we feel unappreciated. So if you feel unappreciated, you're not being intentional. And you're not using your gifts the way they are intended to be used. Many women have been liberated from their codependent behavior by taking on a professional skill and helping others from a place of empowerment. Stop wasting all of your energy on family members who have no intention of changing, no intention of appreciating you, no intention of flying for themselves. This is one of the downfalls in a lot of women's businesses. They start out strong and then they get involved with someone, in a relationship with someone. And they say, oh, let me put down what I'm doing. Let me help them. And then the next thing you know, she's filing for bankruptcy. The next thing you know, she's getting foreclosed on her house. Women lose everything behind relationships, whether it be intimate, whether it be for their children. And we, we wear these things as, as badges of honor. But do you know that the people that we risk everything for in that way, when that is not our place to do at that time, when we're not intentional about it, they don't even appreciate it. They become resentful. So, one of the things that I want you to do is to write down one of the things that you, you, that you are really good at and how you can take it to the next level and charge people for it, right? One of the examples that I use, and a lot of people think it's just irreverent, but 
when you think of prostitutes and how they charge for sexual favors, you can't always look down on them. Why? Because whether they are doing it for one reason or another, a lot of them, they have come to the conclusion this is the end of the road. I got to do what I got to do. You look at you look down on prostitutes. You look down on even I've watched the ID channel so many times and I'm always looking at how committed is a murderer to literally killing their victim. They're committed. They plan it out for years. They play it over and over in their mind. They buy the tools they need to buy. They, they, they go over and over. They practice the scenario over and over again. And when it comes to raising our children, when it comes to making money, when it comes to loving ourselves, we don't even think about it. So when someone takes advantage of us, we like, why did they do that to me? Why did you do it to yourself? Before that person even knew who you were, you were neglecting the intentional power that you had within yourself. Going along, subconsciously hoping someone else would do the work for you. Hoping someone else would love you so much that you wouldn't have to do the work. Hoping someone else would give you a pat on the back and say, hey, you did such a great job. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you so you know, we we want other people to do these things for us. And while those things are nice and admirable when people do do them and we do welcome them, when you become dependent on something, it becomes an addiction. Once it becomes an an addiction, it becomes a liability. And once it becomes a liability, it robs you of everything that you have. So don't look for it. Because everything that you need, the creator has already created that within you. So, how about saving yourself so that you can be strong for others? This is the third pillar where you're going to be saving yourself so that you can actually be strong for others. So, I challenge you to do these three things. So, I'm going to end with you because it's so hard for a lot of people to really love themselves, but it's easy for us to love children. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine yourself as a child. It doesn't matter which age. Some people typically in my sessions, they go to, this is called integrating the child. They go to the age of five or they go to the age of three. Some of them go to a time when they were a teenager. Most of the time it's when they first felt that they failed themselves and they blamed themselves and they got stuck there. And that was when they started punishing themselves and they stopped practicing self-love. Because when we were babies, we knew that we were loved. We didn't question it. We cried. We asked for the things that we wanted. We didn't know until somebody told us. So I want you to picture yourself as that baby, that child, that teenager, and take a deep breath as you picture that. And allow that vision to get closer and closer to you. See your own eyes. In this vision, I want you to see your own eyes. Selena was talking about the mirror, but at this point, I want you to actually see your own eyes, not through a mirror, but in this vision for real. And I want you to look at yourself and I want you to say, I forgive you. I love you. I'm no longer suppressing you. I'm no longer blaming you. I'm no longer making excuses for you. I am actually bringing you in. Think about the text, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, 
I'm going to come back. I'm going to receive you unto myself so that where I am, there ye may be also. A lot of times we abandon our child's self. I want you to go and receive that child and bring that child in and practice those three pillars of self-love. And I'm offering you the ability to first learn how to let go. Learn how to let go. Selena's going to tell you what those offers are. But I don't want you to let that vision of that child go. And any time you feel situations pulling you away from yourself, I want you to remember your eyes as a child, and I want you to say, I receive you. I love you. I forgive you. And integrate that child. Don't push that child away. And remember, reconstruct the world by reconstructing your mind. I know you can do it. Applause, applause. Thank you so much for that word. And it's so fitting, so fitting. One of the things that, um, which you talked about earlier that I absolutely loved was um, how self-love is different than love of self. And I know you and I kind of discussed that a little bit on, on the podcast. And um, when you say love from yourself, not of yourself, that is just so powerful, powerful guys. Now, let me get into what Candy has to offer here. So like I said before, everyone has their offers. And so Candy's gift to everyone is a 12 week book study program based on her book, the Letting Go book. And her special offer is um, to sign up for the nine steps to power course for $380. Now that value is $19.97. So $380 is a good discount. I would jump on that. And then our VIPs will have an opportunity to win a free hypnotherapy session from Candy. And as you can see, after she spoke, I don't know about you guys, but the mood over here is like calm, zen. You know, I just feel so relaxed. She just has that, that tone and that voice. So the free hypnotherapy session, I'm sure you will get a lot out of it. Ooh, okay. Are you ready for more? Well, if you said yes and you are not a VIP, go to the link in the chat to upgrade because after our closing prayer, we will be moving to the VIP after party room. Believe it or not, there's still time for you to upgrade so that you can attend the after party. And, you know, in the after party, we are going to be having a panel discussion. We are going to have an opportunity to actually speak with um, a particular speaker that you, you want to have one-on-one -on -one with. And um, we're going to do that drawing. We're going to put everybody's name on a wheel and do a spin and see who is going to win that package that has all of the speaker's offers. Okay. Now we have come to the end of this portion of our summit, but before we let those that are not joining us in the VIP room go, we would like to have a closing prayer by Prayer Warrior, and mama to Renee Michelle Floyd, Barbara L. Ray. Now, Barbara is an author of two books, The Divine Weight Loss Formula and My Spiritual Journey to Freedom. She has a passion and is called to help inspire and encourage others through her experience and knowledge. She is also a health consultant and herbalist and a great asset to our F3 community because she writes words of encouragement and affirmation almost daily. Now, those two books you can find on amazon.com. I just wanted to give that little plug for you, uh, Miss Barbara, before you take it away and do the closing prayer. Go ahead. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I am just, first I want to say, Lord, have mercy. I have learned so much from each one of these special women of God. I'm telling my head is just, wow. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Oh my God, all of you are just awesome. All right, here we go. Refresh and renew in 2022 Closing Summit 
prayer. Abba Father, you see us, you hear us, you provide for us, and you protect us as our source. Abba Father, as your developing children, we give you thanks for blessing us to refresh and renew in 2022 as we embrace our beauty from the inside out. Abba Father, we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers by taking us out of the way so that you can be in the way because you are the way, the truth, and the life. Abba Father, we thank you for raising us to see things as they are, not as we want them to be, as your developing children in order to do so. Abba Father, we thank you for blessing us with your serenity to accept the things we cannot change and your courage to change the things we can and your holy wisdom to know the difference. Abba Father, we thank you for blessing us with your increased wisdom, your statue, your favor and the favor of mankind. Abba Father, we thank you for blessing us with your spiritual wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your holy will and your holy word. Abba Father, we thank you for blessing us with your spiritual discernment. Abba Father, we thank you for blessing those that bless us and cursing those that cursed us as Abraham's seed and, descend and descendants. Abba Father, we thank you for defeating Satan at your cross, at your grave, and at your resurrection of eternal life and giving us your power, your authority, and your victory over Satan for your glory and for our good. Abba Father, we thank you for blessing us with our spiritual gifts, talents, and skills for your glory and for our good and for the good of others. Abba Father, we thank you for blessing us with your increased finances for your glory and for our good and for the purpose of blessing each other and others as needed. Abba Father, we thank you for our new beginnings, your grace, your comfort, and your presence so that we can endure until the end. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank mm. you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is um, put up the, the Screen that has everybody's link so that you can have an opportunity to jot those down. And then I am going to turn it over back to Miss Renee Michelle Floyd because she is going to um, give you guys instructions on how we're moving forward as far as the VIP room. Um, we got to get the list of the VIPs and, and let you know how you are going to get there into that VIP room. Okay, <laughs> so hold on one moment. Let me share uh. my screen. So I'll leave that up for about a minute or so. This is the screen that you can get everybody's link and uh, be able to reach out to them 
whoever you'd like to, to have more contact with. Renee, are you there? Yes, I am here. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay, so, all right. Mm -hmm. Ladies, oh my goodness. Can you see me? Can you see me? I'm getting ready to move the screen. There we go. Okay. okay. <laughs> <clears throat> ladies, I'm telling you, ladies, this has been legendary for me. And from the chat, I see that people, ladies have had a wonderful, wonderful time. I tell you, God answered all of our prayers. I thank each and every one of you uh, guests for coming and hanging out with us. And uh, we're excited to go to the, next, um, to the next phase in the VIP row. And so all the VIPs, I, first of all, let me, where's my little list? I had, see, I do not, where's my little thank you list? I have my thank you list here because I do not want to forget anybody. And then here, I can't find the list. Anyway, <laughs> I thank you, uh, Kimberly. I thank you, Candy. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to go. I thank you, prayer warriors, Barbara Ray and Lorena Ellis Buckner. Thank you so much for covering us through this entire experience. Uh, Valerie, thank you so much. You and Candy, you all have pressed through knowing what you're going through with your dad. We've been praying for you all with that, praying for him. Um, I thank Kimberly and I thank Priya and Selena. You all have been awesome. I tell you, did I miss anybody? Kathy, Kathy Thomas. I wanted to, she was one of the founding uh, uh, tea persons that helped us to you know, get the teas and everything. And she's behind the scenes, but I'm telling you, she had a couple of guests here. So thank you so much, Ka uh, Kathy. Um, Selena, you did an awesome, awesome job. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Awesome, so professional and yeah. just everything just flowed so well. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, uh, Priya, excellent job with your health and wellness. I oh, mean, yes. you all did Kimberly, oh my God, I'm telling you, you all did awesome. And Candy mm -hmm. brought it on home with her <laughs> calming. And just, I mean, I have notes on front and back of my paper. I tell you, it is just awesome. All of you ladies have just blessed my soul. And, um, and so I am just elated. So ladies, those who are VIP, we are you, got, are you ladies ready to move to the next uh, room so we can have our time? Yeah, that's what you want. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lady. Look how beautiful everybody looks. The smile. Look <laughs> that's my little bouquet right there of everybody. <laughs> Nice and intimate. Hey, Kathy. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited. Oh, Kofi, thank you so much. Oh, this is this Dr. Dr. Buckner. Are you a doctor, Dr. Buckner? I keep saying Dr. Buckner because I'm yeah. set your time. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. I need to you know what? That You know what? That's okay. I'm not uh, all into titles and stuff. I just do the work. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not all into all that, you know. Uh, it gets me in and out of places that I need to go, and uh, but I enjoy doing the work uh, in the prison ministry and everything at the hospitals. I I enjoy the work, and yeah. the title is not important. When I see Jesus, then He's going to give me my title, my robe, and everything <laughs> I'm supposed to have. Yes. 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 Oh, wow. Thanks, Kathy. So I'm not sensitive about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Um, so, Kathy, give me some feedback. What do you all think about yourselves? I'll tell you, 
I'm tell I'm gonna be honest, y'all know I'm gonna keep it honest. I feel like like my little thing, I, I am I was so unprepared. So <laughs> unprepared. I spent all the time preparing for this that I didn't get a chance. You all had point A, point B, one, two. I I'll be better next time. But I thank you guys, you ladies, so much for what you brought. I just I'm just so grateful. You know, so you all have any feedback on what you thought, what you felt about your question, you know, what you what you have to say? Okay. Well, can I say something, Renee? Okay. Okay. Um, I have, I mean, listening to each one of the ladies, young ladies, I tell you, I can truly identify with what everybody was saying because I had to live through it for my healing and deliverance. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, each one of you all spoke from your heart. Each one of you all were speaking from your own experience and each one of you all left a, 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 an impression of you're using your experience to help others to come out of their darkness, to lead them to God. This, this summit, this summit is to glorify God this summit has glorified God and it has, it was good for us and others as well. So I just want you all to know, I, I, I'm i trying to talk, but I'm really speechless. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I never, and, and my daughter Renee. That's right. Oh, Lord have mercy, Jesus. I mean, we don't know how God is going to use our children. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And how he has just poured in. She is just obedient. She didn't go to bed until six something this morning. Every time I got ready to go to the bathroom, I saw the office light on. I said, oh, Lord, when is she going to go to sleep? <laughs> but I tell you, that girl woke up with a a a a energy because she was obedient and God has chosen each one of you beautiful ladies to do the work to do the work and it was awesome so I just want you all to know God is using you all I have learned so much each individual gave what God had put in your heart to give. And I receive everything. I receive it. So I just want you all to know that's what I think because it's the God's truth. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, thank so, you. Oh my gosh. Yes. All right. Yes, I, I, I especially, oh, and Renee, you look uh, gorgeous if not, not to have any sleep. Girl, I tell you, <laughs> if, if staying awake is going to make you look like that, maybe I shouldn't go to sleep. <laughs> Thank but, you. Uh, yeah, so what I wanted to say to our last speaker, I, she's the you're the one that had the asthma and had to go to the hospital. <laughs> That's her. <laughs> well, I know what it means to die. Mm -hmm. And not know mm -hmm. whether you're going to, mm -hmm. if it's your time, Lord, am I ready? But sometime, as the scripture says, we have to die in order to live. Yes. You know, the, the scripture, Paul says, oh. uh, uh, nevertheless, I, 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 I live and I live this life in you. And sometime you have to die in order to really realize what your real purpose in life is and where you're going because 
then you realize, oh my God, I lived through this. Yes. So mm. life has to be different for me now. Mm. That's mm. right. And, and mm. that's what I went through, you know, and, and, uh, and the beautiful thing about it is that I've been, I pray for everybody. Yes. Uh, I have an international prayer list that I send all overseas and everything. Yes. And sometimes I almost feel as though, Lord, I've, I've, I've prayed out. But yes. when I got sick and literally died, mm -hmm. I heard the doctor say, I got her back now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought to myself, I said, you know, I was in a position here that I couldn't even pray for myself. Mm, mm, mm. The prayers that went, that I had put up for other people and then they start praying for me. It's like I was in the overflow. I heard you talk about the overflow. And sometimes the overflow is what brings us through because yes. I pray for myself. But the people that I prayed for in the prayer warriors that I had in my camp, I I lived in the overflow. Because yes. you can be so down on your bed until mm. uh, you can't even say Jesus. Mm. 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 You're wow. out of it. Right. So I, I thank God for your um, dissertation there and how you presented yourself and uh, I'm sure all the ladies um, found something in your speech that they could really improve and live by. Thank you. Well, thank yes. you. I, I, was, I was listening to that. That's very, I'm so appreciative of that. I was listening to Selena when she was talking about her asthma and then yes. Valerie was talking about her uh, sarcoidosis and one of the things that I often do because I'm into emotional mastery is what are those body parts and in regards to um, which emotion rules which body part and grief rules mm -hmm. the lungs. Mm -hmm. So when we struggle with breathing, a lot of the times mm -hmm. we can look and say, okay, what have I been so disappointed about, right? What am I grieving, you know, takes my breath away. Mm. And a lot of the times, most illnesses are a result of, you know, emotional trauma, you know, and exactly. I think a lot of times we don't give that enough credence because mm -hmm. if, if we get healed and then we constantly find ourselves because i kept having the asthma attacks mm -hmm. and i noticed and i think another thing to notice is is that uh asthma is also influenced by our hormones mm -hmm. so it, my as i would have an asthma attack go to the hospital and then i would come on my cycle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, as women, we have so many parts of us yes. that contribute to our condition. And sometimes we only treat one thing. Mm -hmm. We go to the doctor, we get medicine, mm -hmm. but we stay in toxic relationships. You know, mm -hmm. we, we go and we work out and then we come back home and then we don't get any sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, for the longest I was working out and then I, I'm a night owl and then I would work out in the evening and like Selena was saying, I had to take care of my father and then the next thing I knew I had to learn how to get up at five o'clock in the morning. Well, we have to be flexible in order to be successful. Right. We have plans, but sometimes those plans don't work out. And now I'm up at five o'clock in the morning. Now, Valerie will tell you, we can go to the beach and everybody's out watching the sunrise. And I'm like, I'm not there yet, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so being willing to do what does not always come natural is key, you know. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And now it's natural. Now I wake up at five o'clock. It's natural. The body is awesome, though, isn't it? Yes. 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 Priya, isn't the body awesome? 
<laughs> it is. Yeah, uh, it adjusts to whatever we tell it yes, to do. That's it's right. whatever we command. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. in charge of it, right? Well, you know, when I was in grad school and studying exercise science, so I went in uh, doing a second master's with no science background. And the reason I was willing to do that was because my husband is, uh, you know, he, he has got a PhD and I was like, okay, he can teach me to fill in the blanks. Uh, but I was just amazed when I was studying exercise physiology. And one of the things which we learned was, uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with, uh, definitely Kimberly is probably familiar with the sliding filament theory of how the muscles move. And I was just like, oh my goodness. I was like, I knew that we were fearfully and wonderfully made, but mm -hmm. I didn't know it was that fearfully and wonderfully. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was just like so excited. I was going around telling people. In fact, even my professor, who is definitely not a Christian, one of the uh, uh, one of the um, uh, chapters which we did was on bio bioenergetics. So the body has got different energy systems, and it knows when to switch from one system to the other. And sometimes there are two systems going at the same time. And he said he's not even a Christian. He's like, our bodies are pretty amazing. Yes. And so, Kimberly, when you're running, um, don't you find for you that it just serves multiple purposes? It helps you push through all your goals. It helps you work out emotional stress. It just does everything. Absolutely. And, you know, for me, I, I teach running as well. And, and, and you all know I have a secondary business where I do wellness. But one of the things that I've learned is I tell people it's moving meditation, whether you're walking, you're mm -hmm. running, yes. and things of that nature. We've learned, as Priya just said, movement is medicine. We go yes. to the doctor for medicine to, to help alleviate these pains. But if we take some time to move our body and to be still in the movement, yes, boy, you just mm. never know what you encounter. And, and that's what I've learned. I real quick. Although I've been running for many, many years, the last six years, I made a commitment to run every day. And I know a lot of people think that's stressful. And I did too. I thought people who ran every day were crazy. But then I started to do it and realized that it was so much more than running. It's not a physical mm -hmm. act. Right. It's a mm -hmm. mental, it's a spiritual act. Mm -hmm. It's an emotional act that mm -hmm. I do it for. And as a result, I transform as a person. I yeah. see life differently. Mm -hmm. Just being able to either spend time mm -hmm. with God on the run or mm -hmm. listen to a book. I don't like music, but I can listen to a book or mm -hmm. a podcast or something. And it just really fills my spirit. And so it's, it's really a blessing. Mm. You know, that's interesting that you say that, Kimberly, because um, a couple of years ago, my husband brought me a membership to the, um, what is that? Some fitness gym thing. And it was, <clears throat> you go in there and it's like going to Walmart of a gym. And you see all these people in there and everybody's, hey, how you doing? And people are looking <laughs> and they're comparing butts to other people's butts and backs to other people's backs. I said, I don't want this. It, to me, it took away from the spiritual yes. connection that I needed mm. because exercise to me is a spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. So walking for me and now jogging, moving very quickly, that is just, it takes me out of myself. Mm -hmm. But when I was in that gym, I could not do it. Mm. So maybe, maybe when I get stuff tightened and, 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 and it starts <laughs> lifting a little bit, maybe I'll feel better, but I felt uncomfortable with myself. Maybe that was my own issue. And I, I can, I can identify, I can work with that, but I, j it just took me away from <laughs> my focus when I went in there and saw all those people in there. <laughs> Valerie, okay. that, Valerie, that is something which a lot of people have a problem with, especially, you know, if they're not, not used to exercising or they are, you know, they're not fitting into the mold of the slim and trim and perfect, uh -huh, right. you know? Um, so, so you're, you're 
just like a lot of us, you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I want to say something. Kofi Williams, she has to leave, but I really wanted her to say something to so us. So nice to see her. Oh, here. yes. So this is Kofi Williams. Kofi, take it away. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Renee. And first of all, just congratulations on demonstrating what it looks like when you put your vision out there. Mm -hmm. when you, and you begin to manifest it today's a beautiful example of that so i wanted to thank you and just acknowledge um all of the hard work that i know that you did with the group but i understand i also understand what it takes internally for us to be able to step up in this bigger way so really celebrating you sis thank and i you. also want you're welcome and i also wanted to shout out to your powerful powerful presenters let yes. me tell you, ladies, you Ooh. guys fed my soul today. Yes. And I am a business owner. I am a coach. And although I know a lot of what you've shared today, it helps to have it reinforced. Yes. Because I, I always yes. say coaches need coaching, teachers yes. need teachers, and preachers need preaching. Yes. <laughs> right. We all need to be fed. Yes. Into, we yes. all need to be um inspired we all need to be reminded of our possibilities and that's what you guys did for me that's what each of you did for me in your own individual way today it's so beautiful to see these mature powerful women standing in your purpose and making a difference in this world yeah and i don't know about you guys but sometimes it's challenging doing this work Yes. Sometimes it's isolating doing this work. Mm -hmm. it's true. Mm. Sometimes I wonder if I'm really making a difference doing this work. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. And so what you guys have done today is really feed into my soul, into my spirit, into my purpose, so that I can mm. continue to stand, so that I can continue to make a difference in the lives of the women that I want to help, and so that I can continue to be a better me. To be yes. a better me. So I just wanted to just thank each of you, I have each of your links. I will be following you and getting in contact with you. And just wanted to thank each of you for your time, uh, for showing up so transparently, and for letting me know that I'm not alone in this. In this oh, journey. hi, yeah. Kofi. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Kofi, yeah. can you put your information in the chat in so the we chat. can follow you? Sure, I would love that. Thank you so much for asking. Mm -hmm. I will do that right now. Uh -huh. And, and I, she has a seven day challenge. I just want you to plug that in. And I am a registered participant on Monday. I can't wait to start. Well, we've been doing this. She's been throwing little tidbits, uh, you know, in preparation for Monday. So tell us a little bit about that as well. But uh, I can't wait to get started. This is perfect timing for me. Right. Oh, thank, thank you for that. Um, seven day challenge to grow, expand, and thrive, how to grow, expand, and thrive to take your first or your next step with clarity, with confidence, and with power in this coming year. Not promising the world to those who are taking this challenge, not promising that all of your problems and your challenges are going to be solved, but giving you clarity about what it is you want, and helping you to get move past what's blocking you so that you can take your first or next step. And I know that all of you guys know that once we, it's kind of like with the running, I'm a former <laughs> runner too. I don't run anymore. I'm a walker now. I'm 62 years old. Oh, no. oh wow. I, wow. Wow. <laughs> Girl. Yeah. I thought you were 35. I don't have 30. and I don't have any makeup on and I didn't do anything. Awesome. Oh, I put it on. Awesome. Look, awesome. as we would say in the signing world, beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Oh wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. I get it from my mom. My mom is will be 80 um next month and she's sitting here now and listening oh. and she's she's not um you know she doesn't do computers or anything but she's just over here amening and smiling <laughs> <laughs> love this All I just right. love and for her but what I wanted to say is once we get started 
you know, it picks up momentum. So that's yes. what this challenge is for, to help my clients to get clarity um, so that they can take their first or their next step. And I will put the link uh, in the chat. And Renee, again, thank you so much for the opportunity. You are to welcome. And to share and to engage with this beautiful group of women. Yes, thank you so <laughs> thank much, you. Kofi. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, sharing. And I'm looking forward to Monday. Um, so yeah, you put all your stuff in the chat. I think you, yeah, you have, uh, did you put it in yet? I'm adding it right now. Oh, okay. Okay. So this, this, uh, blank spot here in the, in the left, I, I want to get you to Latoya. Um, uh, but this blank spot that says a shabby, that's my youngest daughter and she's hiding behind the camera she says she looks <laughs> crazy but y'all oh, let's, no. welcome, let's welcome a shabby on come on I'll shabby because <laughs> you're here shabby i want her to to share <laughs> i want her to share what her thoughts are um you know she she uh so just share shabby share introduce yourself and uh and all. It's good to see you, baby. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, all uh, right. Yeah, you uh, do. <laughs> uh, I'm in the middle of doing my hair, so that's why, you know. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But, um, you know, I just, I am super excited for my mother. She has been talking about this event for some time now and um, to see it actually come into fruition is just it just brings joy to my heart to see the turnout um, be successful and to see all these wise beautiful ladies here that are dropping gems of wisdom um, for myself I'll be 26 this year um and um, I just have so much more life to live and, and to hear from people that have lived life longer than myself, um, just to hear their journeys on how to become better women, um, the self-love, the self-empowerment, um, getting to a place where you're totally relying upon God to fulfill your purpose in this world. And just, um, I just am just super um, overwhelmed with joy to know that each and every one of you guys have experienced something um, of value in this life and that you're sharing that with other women to um, help empower them themselves and just continue to go through life, even though you may seem like you don't know what's next, what turn to make, um, just to keep pressing through is just so important. And I, um, I've i gotten, you know, a lot of lessons from this uh, summit and I will definitely be revisiting this uh, chat because there are a lot of things that were key, just even, you know, touching bases on the health aspect of it. Right now, currently I'm six months uh, pregnant and I haven't stretched until this new year's and it's definitely um, made a, an impact on my health and just the way my body feels and I feel so much better just from stretching daily and um, making sure my water intake is is what it needs to be I feel hydrated I've had less headaches I've had less heartburn I've had you know just my health has been a lot better since um, taking control of my health and um, uh, just also the, the self love aspect of it. I'm in therapy and um, I've never like, especially in, in the black community, it's kind of a taboo thing to go to therapy. Um, so for me pursuing that side of self-love has really helped and um it's definitely like getting me to a journey of full self-love and um that way I can be able to just love my husband love my my children at its full potential and um yeah I just 
those are just a few things that I wanted to touch base on. And I, um, Kofi, you look amazing. Uh, like what? <laughs> I don't know if she's still in here, but she, no, looks, she had to leave. Yeah, she looks amazing it's for, to be 62. I'm like, that's crazy. I can't <laughs> wait to look that good at 62. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I just um, thank you for having me and uh, I appreciate um, you guys your guys' words of encouragement and just pouring into people that need to hear, you know, that need to hear better because there's so many people that don't come from love and, and that don't come from a place where people even care Excuse me about, you know, their growth in this world. And um, yeah, I just appreciate it. And uh, right. the summit, so thank you guys um for this wonderful event it was worth all of my time and um i can't wait to the next one so hopefully the next three to six months we'll be gearing up for the next summit <laughs> right <laughs> renee <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you stayed all the way through. I was watching yeah. you. I was like, is she going to stay? Because I knew who you were. It's like, if she stays, then I know we're doing good. Right. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Amen. My, my other two daughters, I have three daughters and three sons. So uh, the other two, you know, they they were not able to make it, but they'll see the replay. Yeah, I am just, I'm happy, you know, that she was able to, to, to stay on. So anybody have any other comments? LaToya, you have anything you want to say? Um, yes, first of yeah. all, I'm LaToya, yeah. happy, happy new year. <laughs> and yeah. um, if I had to describe uh, this experience in one word, it would for me be perfection. And yes. um, I don't say that lightly because I am a recovered type A OCD personality. And so um, <laughs> perfection means something to me. But um, I just want to say thank you so much, Renee. I've, um, I consider myself a bonus. I call Mama, Mama Barbara. She's my bonus mother. Um, I, I had the good fortune of being a, a second third mouth to feed um, <laughs> in her house for many, 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 many years. Um, I'm currently in Nashville, Tennessee, but grew up in Los Angeles. And so um, my uh, best friend of 38 years who's not here with us anymore is Chelsea, her other daughter. And so I was just really, really blessed to grow up um, and, and have the benefits of both um, Mama and Renee. So just to see Renee, just to see the the vision, because I remember um, when you just first got started with everything. Mm. So, you know, girl, go be great. Like, you know, you did that <laughs> and, uh, and God did that. But um, for me, um, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee now. Um, I've been here since 1997. And um, I am a corporate attorney by trade. So I've been practicing law for 24 years. And I turned 50 last April. So I, Renee was actually kind enough. Her and mom were like, you can kind of come on in the group a little bit before. So I kind of joined when I was 49. I finally turned 50 uh, last April. So I feel like I'm, I'm legitimate. But um, for me, I'm in such a season of um, transition, which is really good and exciting, but it's also very scary. Mm -hmm. um, I remember everybody's like, you know, New Year's resolutions or all of that. And I don't really, really do that. I set goals. And my word for 2022 was reset. Mm. Reset, realign, reignite, reclaim, replenish, just reset. And when you have been a in a career for a long, long time, and God starts to talk to you about pivoting, yeah. what you're supposed to be yeah. doing and for me I'm like I'm good like I know what I'm doing I can do it in my eyes closed it's very comfortable and he's like no 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 I have bigger plans for you I have a divine assignment for you and you don't need to know everything and you don't need to know how so my directive from him and the Holy Spirit was 
take this year to reset and invest in yourself. Yes. Mm. And mm. so this mm. was part of the whole beginning of the investing in not just myself, but investing in his divine assignment. Yes. As it continues to unfold. And so started, <clears throat> I'm coming off of a, um, I don't know what it is. Basically, this all all of the speakers just ministered to me because by the end of December 2021, I was completely depleted. Mm. Like sick in the bed. I couldn't mm. even cook for Christmas, yeah. which probably a blessing sort of in disguise. <laughs> because I, I worked so hard Thanksgiving, but it was just once again God saying, just sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, and be still. Yeah. So it's, it's just been really, really good to, number one, be still, allow my health to reset and everything, but to just hear all the wisdom and because God's saying to me, hey, we're starting the framework of this business. You know, we're doing this. You know, for me, I like a plan. I like a plan. I want to know everything that's going to happen. I want to know when. I want to know how. I want everything <laughs> done. So this is really uncomfortable. Yes. It's really uncomfortable because I, you know, he's like, I'll tell you when I feel like it. I'll give you more information when I feel like it. And I'm like, no. So so this is all like just very, very um, perfect for me. Um, what he's leading me into um, was the form of formation of, of a company, Battleback Group, um, mm. with the, the target to really minister and have some type of platform for women, um, small business owners wow. who do not have the resources and mm. the means to deal with big law or big accounting firms or big consulting firms because so much of this is just really born out of ministry. Yeah. For me. And so Battleback Group is, uh, it's official. So that was my first step of being open. All right. Um, and now it's just sitting back and going, all right you know, what, what is it that I need to be to, to, you know, engage in self-love, engage in self-care, not depleting myself by giving everything away to everybody else, yes. but really allowing you and the Holy Spirit to manifest yourself in me so I can complete this assignment. So when I do see you, you will say very well, my good and faithful servant. Yes. So that, that is me. So all right uh, Latoya, i was gonna say you better not be getting out of law because it's a lot of small business people who are not taking care of business who need you you'll be yeah. doing yeah no it's not fabulous. getting out of law it's just using it in a way to really help yeah you know, it's like i i do what i do and i'm good what i do but i don't feel a sense of purpose mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i'm just doing it and I'm good mm. at it, but I don't feel like I'm reaching and having the type of impact that God says I need to have. And so you okay. are that is where battle back group was was formed from. It's like I have these skill sets, I have these gifts, I have these talents. There's people that need it. The people I'm currently helping, the people I'm currently making rich, yeah, they, they don't need it. When I right. when I look back over um I was sharing with somebody the other day when I look back over the last 12 years of my career, I have made the last seven CEOs that I've worked for collectively over $140 million. Ooh, wow. wow. Mm. So I'm saying it's it's a thing of, yes. I know I have something to give that's greater than that. Yes. 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 Figuring yeah. out how to do it. Yes. Because awesome. Man. man. That's what you were talking about, Kimberly, right? That's when you yes. left. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, and that's what I've been teaching people for years because like you said, you've making money for others. Yeah. Yes. The yeah. truth is that small businesses fuel the economy. Yeah. And if we if we learn how to transfer our skills, because we learned the valuable skills in corporate America, it's now time to transfer those skills into building something for yourself. And I hate yes. to sound like I'm anti-corporate because I'm not, because I, those are my clients. I still teach in corporate, you know, coach people in corporate. But the truth be told is there's so many talented folks, which is why I believe yeah. 4.4 million people stepped out last year and yeah. said, I will. I'm going to yes. build that business. 
so that I can create my own economy and yes. not be subject to the economy of what exists inside of the organization I'm working at. So oh, I'm excited. Right. I'm excited, Latoya. I'm, I'm yes, glad to hear that. That's awesome. Amen. I'm re- I am receiving all of this. Yes. <laughs> the confirmation. I think my biggest thing is, because I'm really big into the affirmations and just prayer, but really getting myself out my own way. Yeah. And, and operating in a spirit of expectancy and faith mm-hmm. and not fear. Yes. That, yeah. That's like, because you can get very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Making other people wealthy. Yeah. Yes. You know, because they'll throw you a little bit here and they'll throw you a little bit there. But like when you're stepping out and saying, use me, Lord, as a vessel for helping other people to achieve their divine assignments, it's like, whoa, okay. I asked for it. So it's always <laughs> be careful what you ask for <laughs> and then move out the way so the Holy right. Spirit can do the work that, that he needs to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I'm so Toya, you are not a speaker, but I'm taking notes. I'm sorry. You are not a speaker, but I'm taking notes. When oh. you're <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> this is awesome, Kathy. Yes, Kathy. I know you have your goggles on, and you're in somebody's head. Can you just pipe in a little bit of what you uh, got out of the meeting? She's been typing and. I don't know if she's able to do that over her client's head, but uh, I appreciate you hanging in there. Yes. <laughs> hanging in. Ladies, you all, I'm telling you, you ladies, each one of you, Kimberly, Candy, Selena, Valerie, uh, Priya, Barbara Ray, and Dr. Bert Buckner. I will definitely, I, ha- I love it when someone have a title like that. Yes, I want to honor that. And I just, I just, and Barbara Ray, did I say Barbara Ray? Did I say yeah. Barbara Ray? Yes, you did. <laughs> I tell you, I know that this has been a challenge. Uh, uh, Latoya and, and Ashabi, thank you ladies for hanging tight. Yes. yes. It has been a challenge for certainly everybody know it's, you know, when you're behind the scenes and you're putting something together, it's a, it's a big I mean, many days I was here, many nights, you know, crying and saying, Lord, why? I just wanted to have a little, a little stomach. Why is yes, that? Kathy. And um, so I just, I just know that each one of you have sacrificed a lot to be a part of this summit. And um, I just really, really appreciate your time, your professionalism and the, the thoroughness in which you showed up. Um, I, I, I'm, I just have, I'm telling you, I am grateful. If I, I don't know another word to say other than thank you ladies so much. Um, we're going to debrief and we're going to, you know, I'm trying to get my husband to make this uh, root cause analysis type of thing that he used to do. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to do, you know, feedback and, and, and figure out what we could have done better and, and see, you know, um, uh, what other what other recipients have to say? They will be getting a survey in their uh, email. I think to, tonight or tomorrow. Everything is on schedule, right? It's on schedule. And Ren- all- Renee, can I just yeah. ask before you guys depart? Just I know that there was. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to follow the links to get the resources that were mentioned for free, and then, and that's what we're supposed. to to that's do right. as well if there's other, other that's things right. we gotta do them. and I think there was a giveaway yeah. as well yes we have hey, to I, do the uh, wheel of names yeah go ahead and go Renee ahead. I'll send you the, the page that I created with all the links on it so you can send that out in the email oh yes 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 great okay hey um, Renee yes hi Hello. Kathy. 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 Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Hey, I am so excited. It was a fabulous um, summit. My daughter and I are here working. We've been working since 10 o'clock, but we've been listening in and each of the presenters were, uh, you did a fabulous job and we're just so thankful and I look forward to renewing my, going over my notes and um, just really sitting down and listening to it all over again. So thank you, Renee, for um, 
understanding the assignment. And thank you, ladies, for helping her to execute it. You did a fabulous job. And our prayer warriors, I tell you, thank you so much. And our host, Selena, it, it was fabulous. Everything yes. that I believe God intended it to be. That's yes, right. that's right. Thanks, well, that's, Kathy. you know, I appreciate you hanging in there with us, Kathy. Latoya, thank you so much for reminding yes. me of the drawing. So I guess, <laughs> oh, Lord, Latoya said, wait a minute, hold on, wait. <laughs> I want this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't but say are we before. supposed to go to the links just no. to get the, the individual other things and to reach out to the respective speakers? Yeah. Is that how? Oh that yes, works? yes, yeah, yeah oh, that, okay. yeah. But we're gonna do the wheel. I guess I need to share my screen with the wheel of names, um, so that we can do the spin. I guess right, and and everybody, you know, those had to be a present. The uh, VIPs have to be present, right, to win the grand prize, right, Selena, y'all? Okay, so we have Kathy, uh, Shabi, and LaToya. <clears throat> we're, we're not, we're not um, uh, eligible, us uh, speakers, so, and, and uh, Barbara, that's right, Barbara Ray. Well, <laughs> it, wait, now, is she, is she eligible as a prayer warrior? I guess, I don't know. Yeah, so we're gonna put, um, we're, I'm gonna, I should share my screen, right, and let me write these names down. <clears throat> So they had to be present to win? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, right now it's uh, Shabby, Latoya, and Kathy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think I don't think uh, any one of us can do it, Mama. Sorry. No, no, uh -uh. I, I wasn't expecting it, okay. but I still want this team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have Kathy, that's still here, a Shabby, that's still here, and uh, Latoya. Okay, so I'm going to... Share my screen and I'm gonna put the names in the uh, in the pot. <laughs> and <laughs> and we're gonna let me see. So I gotta get to it. Can you guys see see me? Can you still see me? Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's see. <clears throat> Here we go. It's already set. Okay. So let me erase these names here. Oh, that is so nice. Uh, uh, what's the name? Kimberly told me about this. Oh, Kimberly, that's nice. I mean, uh, uh, Latoya. Isn't this nice? I had yes. never heard of <clears throat> Latoya and who? Are, oh, Kathy. Okay, so we got we have our three names in here, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and spin. I guess you just click, click to spin and see who wins the grand prize. <laughs> Oh, wow, Kathy! All right! Hey. I won the grand prize. Woo! That's so cute. Oh, my gosh. That is so cute. Okay, so Kathy, let me see. Oh, wait, I need to stop sharing. Okay. Okay, so Kathy wins the grand prize, and that, again, is uh, all the stuff that we said. Um, yeah. You <laughs> we said let me go back. hold on okay. since kathy's still on um let me go back to my notes and i can tell you exactly what she should be expecting to receive <laughs> um so from renee kathy will be getting the one year i remember that much yeah. the one year, uh, <laughs> the entire 52 weeks of embracing and loving yourself affirmation series plus the downloadable embracing and love yourself journal plus six affirmations set to music and spoken I'm words and your soul um as a digital download right uh, yes. that for free mm -hmm. next from Korea, you will get a free assessment one work which is valued at 140 dollars from miss valerie you will have to win that blue velvet pecan. <laughs> she just really going crazy. All right, Kathy. <laughs> so you had the, the one that I was trying to get from her. I, you almost didn't have it. <laughs> okay, and then from Kimberly, you will get the Millions of Possibilities ebook, and from myself, you will get the five 
days of uh, the mirror reflection self-improvement challenge. And then from Candy, you the uh, a free hypnotherapy session. Wow. All right. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Thank you, ladies. Oh, You're what a welcome. Blessing. Thank you so much. You are welcome. <laughs> are welcome. Yes, yes. All right. Well, I I'm going to I'm going to extend that to Latoya too because I want to support her in her journey of moving forward in what she needs to do because she's got a big work Yes. yes. Well, that's nice. That is Thank nice. Thank you yeah. so much. That is yeah. Nice. That's yeah. huge. That because that's a big leap. I know what that's like. I mean, I'm I was kind of on the other side, going from being self-employed into corporate. <laughs> but either way, crossing back and forth, either way, it's a leap. It doesn't even matter. Taking a leap is is huge. So. Thank you. Just be in touch. Be in touch. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you so that's, much. That's awesome. You're welcome. That awesome. That is awesome. Well, ladies, I think we did perfect timing. We said it was going to be four hours. It's three hours and 41 minutes. Wow. <laughs> wow. Right. And it was jam-packed. Yeah. Awesome information. Yes. Yeah. 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 This is just the tip of the iceberg. So we're, we'll step back and reassess and see what uh, what what will happen. But I will definitely get all the uh, the mailing list names and everything. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. But uh, thank you, ladies, so much for um, you know hanging with us and and making this a reality. I pray that each one of you will be blessed with clients and customers, and you all just make sure you follow up. You know, that's the part right there. Follow up, follow up. You get some gems that a lot of people, I had several people that tried to get on and they can't get on. I just, I've done all that I knew how to do to make it so smooth as possible. And, um, you know, every time we do it, more and more kinks will be knocked out. So we'll see, you know, next time. But thank you, ladies, so much. Is everybody satisfied? Yeah. Thank you, Renee. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Renee. You are welcome. You are welcome. All right. You all have a wonderful Thank afternoon, you, the rest of the day. All, all right. right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.